Yep, Charlemagne the God. Uh, welcome to another week of the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness. This week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Tailor to your brand or business and optimize for every device. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience and sell anything from products to content to time all in one place all on your terms. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's start the motherfucking show. Uh, Hezekiah Walker is not here this week. He's in the Hamptons uh, taking a little, little, little vacay, you know. Uh, but Big Nile is here. Yep. Um, Alex Media is here. You. Yeah. And a woman who did something I today. I gave food to a homeless person today. Because I didn't like the food. Hmm. Oh. That was the story? <laughs> no, he wanted to say no. That was the story? No, he wanted to say something else. I just beat him to it. To no, that is funny. not true. Okay, what, what is this? this what happened? <laughs> yes, Taylor said something to me today that I didn't even realize. Because I never thought about it. <laughs> but Taylor was like, yo... I'm going to go get a plate from the homeless show. I did not say that. <laughs> I did not we're, say we're, that we're, at all. We're, we're, yeah. Where we're at in the city, I guess there's a homeless shelter up the yeah. block. And it's a nice area. So I, I'm assuming it's a nice homeless shelter. But I never thought about it. But I do a lot of work with, you know, the food bank <laughs> in Harlem. And I do, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be starting to do work with uh, Operation Hope in my hometown of Charleston, South Carolina. And... You know, these people be needing these these organizations need donations for food. And I've been to, you know, the, the food bank in Harlem and the food bank in Harlem. They give away groceries. They give away hot food. So it is good food. Mm -hmm. now, I've, and I, I've, I've had like I tried the cookies at the food bank in Harlem because the woman makes uh, these really good homemade chocolate chip cookies. But I was thinking about it. I was like, yo, every time I do walk in places like the food bank, the food does smell good. So I never thought about going to get a plate from the homeless shelter. So Taylor. <laughs> went to the homeless to shelter. Lie. Taylor so went to the homeless lie. shelter to get a plate, but today she didn't like the food, mm. so she gave it away Yo. to a homeless person mm. that had came in, which I thought I was dope. It's it's not, nice. At least she didn't waste it, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I but I just right. never thought about it. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to the homeless shelter to get a plate. That's <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're not going to make it to heaven with you lying like that. You just admitted it. You told everybody. I said I gave food to a homeless person. I did not say anything about where I got it from. I got it from the deli. Thank you very <laughs> no, much. That's not true. Well, that's what they were serving. That's why you didn't like the food today? Why didn't, you, why didn't you like the food at the homeless shelter today? I didn't at the deli? There's nothing wrong with getting food from the homeless shelter. Why would I get food from the homeless shelter, though? That's mad selfish of me to do that. It is. I mean, I, I thought so, but I don't know your situation. So I didn't even think Yo, that. I didn't, I'm not judging. Yo. I did. I, I'm not judging. And I, she, said it, she said it to everybody. She was like, Yo, I'm about to go to the homeless shelter to get I a plate. And I was, I was that, writing Yo. and I looked up like... I just talked to her when she get back. You are such... <laughs> I, I, I thought it was dope. You've eaten from the homeless shelter before, Nyla? No, no, no. But, I mean... I know they got those refrigerators around the city and stuff like that. No, yeah. refrigerators. Like the food be good. Yeah. It's like refrigerators that have food, so if you want some groceries, you can just I've go in the refrigerator. I've never seen that, ever. So, so what do they have at the shelter? You tell me since you work there. I mean, I've, I've given out food at a homeless shelter. Yeah. That's you, great. You me should, too. You should really fuck with the refrigerator yeah. over the shelter because it's quick and you just go and grab. But they got hot meals at the shelter. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, they, they got I hot meals at the shelter. I understand. We're not Joe. judging, Taylor. We're not judging. I hate you. We're not judging. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, yo. Nothing, <laughs> nothing yeah. wrong with it at all. Yeah, so. Salute to everybody out there going to get a plate from the homeless shelter. I know it sounds, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> You know what I mean? But they do have good food. And, I, and she did pay it forward because she gave it away to somebody else because yeah. she didn't appreciate it today. I respect it, Taylor. I know, I know how I argue down. Like, so 
I might be at the show. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn. She said she know how I hard get down, so she might be at the shelter too? Yes. Is that hard? God damn. <laughs> all, you work all, all we do is like, uh, he doesn't count. He's old regime. No. Old regime that has all the money. Mm. There's That's nothing not left. That is not true. Damn, it sounds sound like you need to share the wealth, y'all. That's what it sounds like. It's not on him true. to share. <laughs> That's not true. I make sure my nieces eat. He does. Yeah. Right. I do. Not He's Taylor. Old, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor choose Taylor choose what you want to eat. Yeah. Life is about choices. You want to yeah. go eat at the homeless shelter. <laughs> There might be people out there that do that. I never thought about it. That might be... I'm like, yo, they probably got really good food. Because whenever I'm at one, I smell it. So why don't you try it? You said the cookies was good, so... Well, I, did, I, I, go to, I, I do work with the Food Bank in Harlem. If you want to uh, make a donation to the Food Bank in Harlem, let me give you all the website. Because they really do be, uh, you know, needing food, you know, for, the, for the, the, the people that come there. The Food Bank in Harlem's website is... Foodbanknyc.org. Foodbanknyc.org. So if you know, like, and that, they don't just give away hot meals, they give away groceries. Taylor, you should become an influencer for the Food Bank of Harlem. Yes. That's actually. Me great. and Keenan Thompson are. Really? Yes, me and Keenan Thompson, foodbanknyc.org. Look Shout out to the food bank. I'm not even joking. I'm dead. You know that. Charlotte for the people. Charlotte for the nieces. That's Charlotte sad. for the people. <laughs> yeah. The hungry. I fuck with y'all didn't know that. Nah, no. No. I don't yeah. supposed to know that. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't talk about it. I guess. I mean, I do talk about it because I shot them out and we had uh, you know, one uh, you had them on the show before. But mm -hmm. yes, me and Keenan Thompson, we are ambassadors for the food bank NYC. In Harlem. Uh, it's, 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 it's something we do from the, the, the goodness of our heart. She gets to skip the line. That's why she went. Wow. <laughs> no, she went face? somewhere else. Well, she went today. I don't know where she went. <laughs> what what was the name of the shelter you went to? Well, what's the cross streets at least? Yo. <laughs> did you yeah. or did you not share a meal with a homeless person? In yes. Okay. No, no. Who was oh, the homeless on 54th person? Street, I gave this homeless person... While he was sleeping, and so no. hopefully he surprised with some food. Damn, you don't even know if he wants it. You know, the homeless people in New York are picky. But he was sleep. I feel like he had a water bottle, so there's his food. Nah, you can't do that in New York. You can't leave a piece, some food just laying next to a homeless person. Why? The rats will get it before he I do. I say the pigeons yeah. gonna fuck what? that shit up. It was, it, it was covered. And pigeons ain't number flying rats. <laughs> no, that's bats. <laughs> either way, either either way is happening. Okay, what do we have today? All memes necessary. Uh, where we at with it? Um, okay, so this is this is start of it. So mermaid made him mermaid man and barnacle boy. Man, fuck all that. They took a shot at Trump. Yeah, man. that's what I'm saying. Like, what the that fuck, to man? Be at the top of this okay, shit. <laughs> <laughs> man, that is disgusting. <laughs> New York Magazine places Donald Trump and Joe Biden on the cover of their latest health issue. Why? Yeah, why? Why? <laughs> why? why? Joe Biden's not gonna be there, guys. Yeah. You really think so? Joe Biden yeah. is not going to be there. And, you oh, know, they look, they look the, 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 the thing that pisses me off about all these conversations about Joe Biden is once again, when I was saying this last year, everybody was giving me hell, telling me that I'm trying to, you know, I'm caping for Trump and I want MAGA to win and yada, yada, yada. When all I was asking was, is the Biden-Harris ticket a winnable ticket? I don't know how nobody didn't see this coming. I do not understand how folks did not see that Joe Biden was not going to be a winnable ticket in 2024. I think if he did good during the debate, people wouldn't be. He was down in the polls. Bit. He was down in the polls. But bit. it was still close. I mean, it's it's always going to be close, and that's the other thing. And I, this is the other thing that I keep saying over and over, and I've been saying it for the past two weeks since I got back back from vacation. When you look at the Supreme Court right now which I believe is no longer a legitimate institution. I believe the court is completely corrupt. And you look at all of the rulings that they have done recently, whether it's granting, you know, presidential immunity to presidents to, where they can just commit crimes and get away with crimes as long as it's an official act, where they can take fucking bribes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where they made it to where public officials could take bribes, overruling the Chevron Act. Look up the Chevron Act if you don't understand what the Chevron Act is. It's basically, a matter of fact, I'm going to read it to y'all. Please. I'm going I'm to I'm read to you what the Chevron Act is. And there's a great article that I keep telling everybody to read by Ellie Mustel. He wrote it for The Nation. And the name of the article is... Uh, it's impossible to overstate the damage done by the Supreme Court in this term. But he says that uh, 
I simply cannot overstate the significance of what has just happened. In one single month, the Supreme Court legalized bribery of public officials, declared the president of the United States absolutely immune from criminal prosecution for official acts, and made the power to issue regulations subject to the court's unelected approval. So basically, the court can... They can do whatever they want. And the one the, the one thing that I've been sending everybody from this article, because I want you to read it, but just listen to this. The Supreme Court is the only branch of government that claims the power to rule unchecked by the other branches of government. If Congress passes a law, the court claims authority to overrule it. If the president issues an order or regulation, the court claims the power to overrule them. If a state legislator or governor passes a rule or ordinance, the court claims the power to overrule them. And if voters attempt to elect leaders, the court claims the authority to overruled him by literally picking whose votes should be counted or recounted to say nothing of who gets to vote in the first place. How do we even know right now we're in a healthy enough democracy that we're going to have a free and fair election come November? Now, I'm a person who believes Donald Trump would beat Joe Biden anyway. Mm -hmm. But let's just say Joe Biden, if he's still in the race, which I, he won't be, uh, he squeaks it out. Right. Let's just say. When you look at the fact that Donald Trump asked the Supreme Court to grant him presidential immunity and they did it, when you look at them doing something as corrupt as allowing uh, uh, public officials to be able to take bribes now, they just call it gratuity. When you're leaving it up to them to, you know, come to their, uh, they can come to their own, uh, 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 everything is up to their own interp uh, interpretation, mm -hmm. right? That's what the Chevron, getting rid of the Chevron, overturning the Chevron ruling, ruling is. Things are up to their own interpretation. When you see that, if there's a close election in November and Donald Trump challenges it, just like he did in 2020, who do you think the Supreme Court is going to side with? Mm -hmm. A Supreme Court that Donald Trump appointed three members to. <clears throat> who do you think that they're going to side with? Yeah. It's common yep. fucking sense. And none of this is new. When I was, and I, was, I did Stephen Colbert this week. And I was reminded when I did Stephen Colbert that the last time I did Stephen Colbert, I said there was four things that needed to be done to protect democracy. You got to pr prosecute everybody involved with January 6th. And I was talking about the elected officials. Right. You have to um, uh, 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 get rid of the filibuster so you can properly legislate. You have to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and you have to expand the Supreme Court. Hmm. And it's not it's, the Supreme Court is not corrupt because they're majority conservative they're corrupt because they're majority corrupt mm. <laughs> like when you see people <clears throat> doing these outlandish type of rulings you know that they're no longer giving a fuck about the constitution that presidential immunity thing don't have nothing to do with the constitution that's just some shit they made up please everybody go read that article from uh ellie mustel in New Yorker magazine, and you will understand why I feel like uh, I don't even think our democracy is healthy enough to have a free and fair election. And come November, what I'm saying right now about the Supreme Court no longer being legitimate, if, you know, Donald Trump doesn't beat Joe Biden, which I honestly think he will anyway, but if they get rid of Joe Biden, put new candidates there, and they squeak out a win, watch what happens. Watch what happens. Okay, two things. Mm -hmm. The titties that Donald <laughs> Trump has on this cover is crazy. The first comment, hilarious. What does it say? Joe uh, ate him up. <laughs> Joe ate him up. <laughs> in better shape. Number two, what can we do? Like, all that being said, I don't even want to read the article because I don't want to be depressed. Like, That's not depressed. It is depressing. <clears throat> I'll tell you. Ellie gives two things that can be done. Ellie says there are only two ways to deal with the Supreme Court. Ignore its rulings <laughs> are flooded with new justices who will give the who will give back the power this court has stolen from the rest of us. The first option most likely leads directly to civil war, one where the rule of law can be imposed only by military force under the sole discretion of whoever happens to be the president. Assuming that president commands the loyalty of the military, democracy cannot long exist if laws have meaning only when the president decides to enforce them at the point of a gun. The second option. Court expansion. 
Court expansion is the normal, peaceful, constitutional solution to a court that no longer believes it could be checked by other institutions. Adding justices who are going to act within the bounds of their constitutional authority is the only peaceful way to save ourselves from the ones who won't. I support court expansion because it is a simple, legal, and nonviolent way to counteract the corrupt and power-hungry court. But if you do that, if uh, once... Joe Biden also says he doesn't agree with that. That's what he said two years ago. Rece uh, just a couple of days ago, he said otherwise, but go ahead. So if Joe Biden expands the court, adds judges to it, then Trump gets in office, couldn't he just add more? And then it's just going to be a or cycle of them just off. like constantly just adding more people? Sure, and that, that's always been the argument of why people don't want to do it. But uh, yesterday, Joe Biden said he's set to announce support for major Supreme Court changes. What he wants to do, he says, is he wants, he, President Joe Biden is seriously considering proposals to establish term limits for U.S. Supreme Court justices and an ethics code that would be enforceable under law amid growing concerns that the justices are not held accountable, according to three people briefed on the plans. It would mark a major shift for Biden, who has long resisted calls to reform the high court. Though since taking office, he has been increasingly vocal about his belief that the court is abandoning mainstream constitutional interpretation well, why would he think? wait so long to do it because they're cowards oh. that's what i've been trying to tell everybody forever but when i say it folks think charlemagne is maga <laughs> democrats are cowards people definitely think you're maga for no goddamn reason people will really think you're maga not no more that no. changed over the last week or so no they still think you're maga it changed because everything that i've been saying everybody's been saying the past week or so. Now everybody's asking the question I've been asking. Is the Biden-Harris ticket a winnable ticket? When I said back in December on The Daily Show that I think Joe Biden should give people the biggest Christmas gift and just step down, give America the biggest Christmas gift and step down, people got mad at me. But guess what? When David Axelrod, the white man, says it, don't nobody say nothing. When Ezra Klein, the white man, says it, don't nobody say nothing. But when the little Negro from Mom's Corner, okay, <laughs> who can't really pronounce street straight and strong says it, I'm MAGA. Wow. Get the fuck out of here. That, uh, All I'm simply saying <laughs> so is if uh, Biden doesn't run and we have most likely Kamala and someone else, do you think that's a winnable ticket? I don't know. I, I, I'm willing to roll the dice with that. I think more than President Biden. Because yeah. for sure, I'm more black not... women will vote for Kamala. Black right? women coming out regardless. They, like, that, that's they, not that, true. That, that definitely was not going out for Biden. That's a lie. Black, black, black <laughs> vote blue no matter who applies to black people the most because the highest percentage of uh, the high black people vote, black women vote the highest percentage for Democrats every election. Look it up. And yeah. second is black men. Maybe that's for the people who it's are like actually 90 going plus out percent. and voting. But I'm saying me and all my homegirls don't care. We had no intention to vote. At all. Now, I think me, that's the sentiment for a lot yeah. of people. And this is why I believe it would be, it would benefit Democrats to get rid of Joe Biden. It would benefit Democrats to get rid of Joe Biden because it would energize people, right? And, and not only would it energize people, it would put a sense of urgency in the voters because the voters would be like, oh, shit, he stepped down. Oh, shit, they got rid of him? Oh, shit, is a black woman who could be the president? Possibly. Oh, exactly, that's what I'm saying. Possibly, yeah. but, 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 and then, and you know, her vice president, it's gotta be somebody white. It's got, and I'm talking about, it's gotta be, you gotta find the Democrat that's MAGA white. <laughs> you can't just okay. get like not these new age white people. Mm. Okay. You gotta get, you gotta get you a, a MAGA white person. You gotta present as MAGA white. People don't remember back in 2008, Joe Biden was MAGA white. In 08. Like they went and found like the, the the white man that would make other white people feel comfortable to vote for the black man. <laughs> yeah. And Biden was that. He was the closest to that for the Democratic Party. So they paired him with with Obama mm. and it worked. Yeah. They gotta do the same thing now. You know, I, I, I today I saw uh what's the poll I saw today? How do you feel about Project uh 2025? Uh, I think Project 2025 is something that people should discuss, but it's like a wish list from the Heritage Foundation that they will absolutely implement if Donald Trump gets into office. J.D. Vance was the Heritage Foundation's pick for a for presidential candidate, mm. and that's who Donald Trump ended putting as his, his vice. But I think people should be talking about the Supreme Court right now because the Supreme Court is, you know— um, <laughs> 
is getting rid of our constitutional rights as we speak. We got less. I'm 46 years old and I got less constitutional rights right now than I did when I was born. Like y'all, how quickly y'all forget Roe v. Wade is gone. Oh, didn't forget. Affirmative action in colleges is gone. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, gone. So how many more rights are the Supreme Court going to take away? And once again, this has nothing to do with the Supreme Court being majority conservative. This has to do with the Supreme Court not being impartial. Mm. It don't matter if it's conservatives or liberals on the Supreme Court as long as these people are impartial. This is not an impartial court. Yeah. This is a court that is doing the far right's bidding. So if we do end up going to civil war... Like, violence is inevitable, y'all. That's a big joke. Listen, listen. <laughs> violence is inevitable. I mean, I feel like we should just do it and get it over with. But like, whoa, what are you whoa, talking whoa, about? Whoa, no, whoa, whoa, why the, not? Whoa. What do you mean, get it over with? I feel like we should do it and get it over with. Are you strapped? I don't even know what that right means. Now? At this very moment? And you know, yeah. No, this very, no. All right, so now <laughs> you want to get it over. Well, maybe not right, right now. now immediately, but let me prepare. I feel like we should just mentally prepare for the worst. Nah, let's not. <laughs> By the way, let's she's not she's, she's not all the way wrong, though, Alex. And, and, and I'm not saying that we should... I'm not talking about going to war. I'm just talking about mentally preparing for the worst. Yeah. Oh, okay, unless yeah. we start seeing some extreme resistance from the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. unless they stop being cowards, because there's only two things that can happen right now. Either everybody rolls over and accepts what's happening, or two, they fight. And right now, they don't look like they're prepared for a fight. Just look at how everybody just like willingly surrendered, the, the press especially, just willingly surrendered to fascism this week. Yes, there was an attempted assassination of Donald Trump on Allegedly. Saturday. We'll get to that because I love this. I love to hear the young perspective on this. Uh, there was an a, a, a assassin, attempted assassination attempt of President Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump. Everybody should be condemning that. There's no place for political violence in our country. I don't care how you feel about his politics. I don't care how you feel about him. And if you think otherwise, just imagine that was an elected official you like. Yeah. Imagine that was, God forbid, Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett. Imagine that was, God forbid, Vice President Kamala Harris. Imagine if that was Michelle Obama. I feel like if it was anybody, I don't want anybody getting shot. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the perspective that, you know, uh, we, 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 we all should have. But you should be able to say that, but also say, look at the way Donald Trump's rhetoric created an environment of political violence that's not even safe for him. Like, this isn't new mm. for Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been doing, causing these political, these, 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 these acts of political violence to happen. Like, and he's been so cavalier about a lot of it. He laughed when uh, Nancy Pelosi, one of his supporters, attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband with a hammer. You know, when, uh, uh, the, what's the governor? The governor of, um... I think it's Montana. The governor of Montana had body slammed a reporter. And Donald Trump said, that's my type of guy. When he was talking what? about Hillary Clinton. Yeah. When, and, we can, and we can add the clip. When we, when he, and I, cause I played all of this in my donkey the day the other day. When he uh, was talking about Hillary Clinton, um, you know, he, he said he was talking about Hillary Clinton possibly putting judges on the Supreme Court. And he goes, once she get in office and she does that, there's nothing you can do about it. But then he goes, but all you people who believe in 2A, maybe there's something you can do about it. See, it's all fun and games when it's the left being the victims of political violence. Have we, how quickly have we forgotten January 6th? Yeah, I know. The attempted coup of this country when, 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 when all his supporters stormed the Capitol and said they wanted to hang Mike Pence, yep. who was his then vice president. How quick do we forget things like this? So when people are saying things like, Tamper down on the rhetoric. When I heard House Speaker Mike Johnson say everyone needs to tamper down on the rhetoric, who is everyone? I only see one person <laughs> that needs to tamper down on the rhetoric. When his now running mate, J.D. Vance, says it's the Democrats' fault. It's the Democrats. Democrats are the reason that Donald Trump got shot at because of their dangerous rhetoric. Really, J.D.? You called Donald Trump Hitler. Hitler yeah. You did. How quickly, how can you go from Hitler the Hawk Tour. <laughs> this motherfucker, J.D. Vance, went from Hitler to being on stage giving Donald Trump the Hawk 
Tua. Disgusting. <laughs> That's why they call it a full-throated endorsement. All right, all right. That's all right, what they call right, it. Right. They call it a full-throated endorsement oh, for a reason. Because you got to basket weave that shit and hawk Tua. All right, all Spit right. on that thing. How do you go from Hitler to giving a man the goddamn hawk Tua, y'all? <laughs> you are crazy. My, my point, my point, my point, my point with all of this is, my point with all of this is, media, CNN, MSNBC, y'all all let me down this week. The fact that MSNBC took Morning Joe off the air on a Monday morning, just yeah. because they say that Morning Joe is so anti-Trump, so they didn't want to, you know, um, do anything that's going to, I guess, you know, stir shit up. But I don't get that because I'm like, they're still professionals. Like, they yes. still have to have self-control. Yes. So you hire people that you don't feel comfortable with what's going to come out of their mouth? Like, how? What What, what did I say? I, when, when Saturday, when this happened, last Saturday when this happened, I said to everybody in the group chat, I said, you know what's about to happen? I said, they're going to stop talking about Trump being a threat to democracy. They're going to stop talking about the insurrection. They're going to stop talking about Project 2025 and he's going to gain a whole lot of sympathy. Mm -hmm. I said, watch. I can see I, I can see the play a mile away. And that's exactly what they did. Once again, you can condemn what happened to Donald Trump and you should condemn what happened to Donald Trump. We should condemn all political, you know, violence in this country. But let's not forget what got us here. And it is okay to keep having those conversations about what got us here. I saw David Axelrod bring it up on CNN, and uh, one of the conservatives on the panel was like, D -d 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 "Don't you don't 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 say Donald Trump deserved this because uh, of because of January 6th. Axelrod was like, "I didn't say that. <laughs> All I simply said was, and he's right. If you're going to bring up any talk of dangerous rhetoric." leading to Donald Trump getting shot or getting shot at, you got to start with him. Yeah. You got to start with him. Yeah, definitely. Period. Period. Now, so why do you think it's fake, Nyla? I don't know. I, I didn't see the video because I was out and about. So how can you yeah. form no, no, no. an I'm opinion? Saying, I'm saying, Classic Generation no, X. Saying, What's y'all's generation? What is I'm it? I'm saying when I texted you, or when we were texting, I hadn't seen the video. So I had just saw the headline because I was DJing. And I was like, oh, that's fake. Like, I didn't even second guess it. But then when I saw the video, but, all right, a few things. One, the guy who shot him is a kid, and he's still alive. No, he's not. He's, he's dead. Not, he's dead. Oh, he no, died within was... seconds. <laughs> what are you talking about? Secret Service took him out Come on, immediately. No. I just don't believe any of it. That's the problem with the world I we live know. in. Number one, believe... people don't have all, they don't even have all the information. This is a prime example <laughs> of what is, is wrong with our generation. Yeah. And it's not just the youth, it's adults too. They don't have any information. Yeah, no. None. Zero whatsoever. They come to these conclusions. Then they talk about, y'all talk about these things y'all don't know with such confidence. I I said I didn't know. And you're not the only person you who said that to me. You ain't you ain't no. <laughs> I said, when I first saw it, I thought it was a fake headline. That's and that's not your fault. I was out DJing. But that's not your fault. Someone told me, did you see Trump got shot at? I'm like, damn, for real? It, ge it gave, like, he wanted to have a Tupac moment, honestly. No, like, I no. Feel like he's Tupac trying to got shot. Uh, yes, but I'm saying, <laughs> I feel like he's trying to paint a picture to get empathy from people like you were saying. Like, I think people wanted to just soften Trump up. So I don't think nobody's going to allow curious, bullets though. to fly past their head. So yeah. after after you were DJing and then you got to look up the story, you weren't, like, so into finding out as much information? Like, I feel like everybody my age and up, that whole weekend they were just consumed with... I feel like we're not that far apart in age, but I will say... Nah, I'm 35. The nigga is still alive, so I was like, all right, so buy a shot at him. He's still here. See, see, He's still running for president. Talking about, talking about what, she, what, she, what she said? She said the nigga is still alive. <laughs> so in her mind, that's the perspective she's looking at it from. She don't realize that's a former president of the United States of America. Well, he don't act like it. That's true. He do act like a nigga. He don't there act like it. That. <laughs> there is something to that. I mean, there is something to like, that. Yeah. So you don't look at him as a president is what you're saying. I'm not saying... I'm not necessarily saying those words. I'm just saying... for. 
People who carry themselves a certain way, there's a certain level of respect or care that I give to Ooh, it. Oh, it's the type of victim blame that I like. And this, what and was he wearing? But this, what was he wearing, no, Nyla? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is not victim blaming. I don't want to stop. Wow. How is that victim blaming? That's exactly how it sounds when you victim blaming somebody. Look, once again, it don't matter what you think of Donald Trump personally. This should not happen in America. I just said I, don't I agree live in with a country. that statement early on. I said nobody should be getting shot at. I, I don't. Yes. But also, I mean, the type of things that he does, like evoke riots on January yes. 6th, I think that comes with That's it. That's all so, I'm saying. This nigga's still alive? All right, cool. This is what we're still dealing with. If he was dead... And, and this should be such a teachable moment. And I guess that's why I got so upset at MSNBC and CNN this week, because it should be such a teachable moment where we start having conversations about this is why you don't um, incite political violence. Mm. This is why your rhetoric shouldn't be a certain way, because you may influence people to do things like this. It's just that simple. I'm curious, just to play devil's advocate, because I agree with you, mm -hmm. but people can say that, oh, this is American history. We've always had uh, the political system so polarized where people do acts of Not violence. Not like now. I mean, I think this JFK, is um, what was the other one? Ronald Reagan. Reagan, like, this shit happens. Abraham Lincoln. But yes, it does happen. But I don't think anything has ever been like this. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I mean, this is our lifetime. That's why it and feels like lifetime. it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's new, it's, it's, it's new to us and it's new to our generation. But I've never seen things be this polarized. And, and, and everybody was holding their breath like, please don't let the shooter be black. Please don't let, <laughs> please don't let the shooter be Jewish. Please don't let the shooter be Muslim. The fact that it was just a white guy, yeah, no. 20 years old, and the reason that I mean, people were pointing them out, right? There were people saying things like, oh, there's the guy. Yes, that, can that, we get into guy, the conspiracy? Guy. Let's get into the fun shit. He don't look suspicious because it's a Trump rally. Okay. Oh, he blended man. right in. 20-year-old 20 20 white dude walking around with a rifle at a Trump rally. Sounds on brand to me. That's the level. I watched him last night at the RNC clap so much when... um. J.D. Vance was telling the story, I think, about his grandma and how his grandma had 19 guns hidden around the house. No. They lost their minds to that. Like, I mean, they was clapping, USA, USA, USA. All he did was say his grandma had 19 guns around the house. And even though she was old, she knew she was moving, so she had always had to have something to protect her family. That's... They lost their <laughs> minds to that. 19 guns in a crib is crazy. It is crazy. Right? This whole thing is crazy. It is crazy. Okay, so what do you think about um, the failure of the Secret Service to even let this happen? Great question. Um, that's why it doesn't seem real. No, that's why it seems very real to me, and that goes back to my, question, my point about the rhetoric. Okay, everybody's looking at it from the perspective of the Secret Service failed, uh, you know, there was a breach of security, how did this happen? What if somebody allowed it to happen. That's what if somebody lot, saw it and was like, what if somebody saw it and was like, nah, 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 let that, let that go down. What does that tell you? Somebody don't like Trump. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you saw that and allowed it to go down, that means you don't like Trump either. Internally. So once again, he has created an environment of political violence that he's not even safe in. Mm. None of his people are safe in. Democrats aren't safe in. People with opposing political opinions aren't safe in. He has created that kind of political environment. All I'm getting from Biden and Trump right now is that y'all should have listened to the 70 percent of Americans who's told y'all they did not want a Biden Trump rematch because all it's been is chaos, yeah. confusion, noise. In the last two to three weeks, have you heard anything? from any presidential candidate that makes you want to vote for them in regards to what's going on in your life. Hell no. Nope. In, in regards to what's going on in your pocket, in regards to what's going on with your health, in regards to going on with your shelter, like just life. Mm. Because we're debating about Joe Biden dropping out. He's too old. You know, he, he, we don't think he can win. Donald Trump just a, a, attempted assassination. Allegedly. We, alleg no, it's not allegedly. Stop. It was an assassination attempt. <laughs> and by the way, we don't get anything out of saying it's fake. I don't understand why people want to say it's fake. No, this is very real. Political violence is very real. And guess what? It's going to get realer. 
Everybody needs to understand that what happened Saturday was not uh, was not just an assassination attempt. What happened Saturday was a declaration of war. If you shoot at somebody's leader, you have declared war. Mm. Trust me when I tell you, it's a bunch of MAGA motherfuckers right now in America ready to get their lick back in some way, shape, or form. I just don't understand like why the animosity is so high between like MAGA and the rest of us. And I think because we're in Who's such the rest a, of us? a liberal city. You're forgetting too, during the pandemic, Trump was kind of, what does he call the Proud Boys and everything? I feel like he enlightened the... Empowered. That's his squad. Charlottesville is another time that uh, he, he, he incited violence. All you got to do, y'all go to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT, say how many times has Donald Trump incited violence? Hmm. And then ask how many times Joe Biden has incited violence. Literally, Chat GPT don't have one instance of Joe Biden. It's got several from Donald Trump. Somebody did a whole ad about it. I, think, I don't know. If, I think it was the Lincoln Project. I'm not sure. I don't know. Mm. But that's where it begins. All I'm simply saying is this. I just can't this. imagine it because New York is so liberal. Like, I got friends Are all you crazy? Colors. You, I'm not saying like you, you gotta, great. they be out there on. protesting in all the Trump time. Tower right now. Yeah. What? Yeah, really? MAGA be yeah. out there heavy with the crazy looking flags, waving drive. them in the middle and of the, the street. You never seen any of the cars drive by with what? The, like go what? To, uh, go to Staten here. Island. Let's go to Staten what? Island. You're Yo. gonna see Trump flags. What? <laughs> Upstate New York, crazy. Oh Upstate for sure. Yeah. Why do you think Lee Zelkin almost became governor of New York? Crazy ass Lee Zelkin who was on Breakfast Club. And when I asked him what he was doing for the black community, he said he was host, he hosted a jerk chicken fest. No, he didn't. <laughs> yes, he did. No, for real? He did. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He said it. And I said to him, I said, I said, you mean to tell me, I asked you what you're doing no. for the black community, and you told me that you hosted a jerk chicken fest? Go, I'm a punk. Go look it up. I, We're going to start all this stuff. I, I I'm not making this up. Yo, I don't like keeping up with politics because it just stresses me out. I love it. It don't I, stress me out I at all. I feel like there's what? nothing I could do about it. Like you just said, the Supreme Court could disqualify my vote. So why would I want to go vote anyway? No, I don't feel like just that. just like rolling over and just taking it. That's right. I, like I said, you either going <laughs> to roll over and just take it or you're going to fight. Don't be like MSNBC. Don't be like CNN. Don't 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 willfully surrender to fascism. Do what you can do. Right now, they're telling you to vote. I'm not telling you to, who to vote for. I'm just telling you to go out there and exercise your, your, your civic duty to vote. And, you know, I hope that Democrats get a motherfucking backbone. I hope they get some courage and I hope they stand up to, you know, uh, the Confederacy. And I hope they stand up you know, to the Supreme Court. That's why everybody talking about Project 2025. I get it. I understand. I I, 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 I I know why you're doing that. But what the Supreme Court is doing is happening right now. The Supreme Court is a clear and present danger right now. But I agree with that. But I also think the Project 2025 is sexier because, like, the things that it has written in it is so controversial. Ain't nobody read them 900 pages. Yeah, but if you look at a bunch of TikToks right now, it's like they, they just grab the ones that are the craziest things. What are the and, craziest? Uh, um, look it up. I'm, I'm, Why I'm are we sitting here like we don't have access to everything? Yeah. Matter of fact, you, you got the, what, what you got? That's, he, that's the, Trump, it, it's yeah. not, it, what's that? Look at this long, and this shit's still going. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. Yeah. This is Chad GPT. What did you type in, Nyla? What you said? How many? How many times has Donald Trump incited violence? That's good. Charlottesville, 2017. Campaign rallies. During his 2016 presidential campaign, Trump made several statements that were interpreted as encouraging violence. For example, he once suggested that his supporters knocked the crap out of protesters and promised to pay their legal fees. The Capitol riot. That's the insurrection. Of course we know about that. Uh, and then they give detailed breakdowns. During a rally in Las Vegas, Nevada, Trump said of a protester, I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you that. At a rally in Warren, Michigan, Trump suggested that if his supporters see someone about to throw a tomato, they should knock the crap out of them and promise to pay the legal fees to anyone who did. Charlottesville, after the violent clashes at a white supremacist rally in Charlottesville, Trump stated that there were very fine people on both sides. El Paso shooting, although not a direct incitement. This is, this is fair. Critics argue that Trump's rhetoric about immigrants and his portrayal of them as criminals and invaders may have influenced the shooter in El Paso, Texas, who targeted Hispanic people. You got the Liberate, Liberate tweet. The George Floyd protest where he tweeted, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. 
a phrase historically associated with violence, oppression of civil rights protests, which many saw as incitement to violence against demonstrators. Look, look it up yourself, man. I ain't got time to do all of this because there's a lot of things I want to talk about on this podcast today. But Project 25. Okay. What do we have? Look up some of the stuff. This, chat, 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 GPT. By the way, I've been on ChatGPT crazy. What? I love ChatGPT. I'll be on Meta AI. You know what? But, 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 no. Wow. no, I'm going to tell you why. I, 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 I haven't been on ChatGPT. I've been on Meta AI. They don't matter. Exactly. You are so against AI. You and, I'm, were. And, I, and, and, and I'm And I'm still slightly, I'm still against it. And I'm going to tell you why. They, they be very wrong. Oh. So what? Google be wrong sometimes. N it's not, but, but, and once again, and I only can base it, I don't ask questions about other people. Mm -hmm. I ask questions about me. And the reason I ask questions about me <laughs> is because I know the truth. Okay. I don't know the truth about other people. So yeah. if, if, if Meta AI tells me something about somebody, I don't know if that's wrong or not. Yeah, but how many people write stuff about you online that's false? They're just pulling from everything that's online. Well, that's, so that's the problem. Okay, but that's everything. That's, whether it's Google, where it's AI, where it's everything. Yeah, but, but it, 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 is, it, is, it is interesting, I will say. Meta AI is very interesting. What, okay, tell me Project 2025. To put, just type in top three worst things in Project 20, 2025. Top three worst. And then put four niggers. What? I'm okay. just playing. What? Don't put four niggers. That was crazy. I'm just playing. Just put probably just, I'm, I know, I know, that, that somebody listening to this right now, that's MAGA with. <laughs> okay, attack on the reproductive rights. That's already happening. Um, this is right here. Erosion of workers' rights. Oh, y'all, you overworked, underpaid black women. Now they want to <laughs> listen. Listen, that shit is crazy. Read that one. Read that one. That one is crazy. Um, it says the plan proposes changes that would undermine existing labor protections, such as making it easier to classify workers as independent contractors, thus exempting them from minimum wage and overtime compensation regulation. It also seeks to alter overtime pay rules, making it easier for employers to avoid paying overtime by averaging work hours over long periods and allowing overtime. I mean, I've already been living through this, so I can't. It's, See, that shit don't scare you. It's not going to change. <laughs> <laughs> They've already been doing that. So. Yeah, you ain't gonna scare black women with being overworked and underpaid. Yeah. Project 2025. Thank you. Okay. For <laughs> the next one is <laughs> elimination of anti discrimination protections. Fuck you, niggas. Yep. So, collect and you that Jewish at, people, and you LGBT folk. That's what. That's literally what that's, yeah. that is. So it would make it difficult to collect data on racial disparities in employment, public education, and policing, which could hinder efforts to address systematic discrimination. Additionally, it proposes allowing religious employees to bypass anti-discrimination laws, potentially enabling discrimination against women and LGBTQ. Listen to me. They're going to criminalize pornography. No. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to um, train a bunch of people so... That way, once Trump's in office, all the people he puts in place are only the people they trained. And they're completely so, like loyal to him. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> it's like, gonna be crazy. Just like <laughs> the three people that he appointed to the Supreme Court are extremely loyal yeah, to him. Do you realize be. they granted presidential immunity because he asked them to? Yeah. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. I think if the Democratic Party you like focuses on Project 2025 and like really attaches it to Trump, it's like, hey, do you guys want this? If you vote in Trump, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, but because you should Trump's be trying to distance himself from it. I agree, but I think that we should be using the Supreme Court as an example of that now. I yeah, think we should look at all of their. You see how much rulings. nuance for that? Like people don't. People have heard of Project 2025. They're not, they're not paying attention to the nuance with knew, all this Supreme Court. They need Court to pay attention to the Supreme Court, which is no longer a legitimate institution, because I'm telling you, come November, who's this? Let me read. Let me read this. Let me read this thing no, from no, Ellie I'm, once that's again. That's what I'm saying. I just you, right? I'm just saying I, I, what's going to help the Democrats win. And I think if you scare people into thinking... But see, I think, see, I think that's part of the problem, Alex. I think... I think People are tired of being scared into Girl, voting. That's the fear mongering has been happening for so long. But I, I don't I, even know if we're in fear anymore. I feel like I'm in fear that, to happen. If you ask any um, conservative, what are they afraid of? They're like, oh, the democracy is being taken away. They're going to take away our freedom of speech. They're going to take away our right to bear arms. Like they're afraid of losing all of their rights. That's how they have like. 
in like those are fake patriots to me. And the reason I say I those mean, are that's fake the patri- people that's out there. No, you're right. But the reason I say those are fake patriots is because nobody should be happy about what's going on with the Supreme Court right now. I don't give a fuck if you're conservative or Democrat. If you believe in democracy, you should not care. I mean, you should absolutely care about what's going on with the Supreme Court, because just like Ellie says in this article, if voters attempt to elect leaders, the court claims the authority to overrule them by literally picking whose vote should be counted or recounted to say nothing of who gets to vote in the first place. This is not how a democracy or a republic is supposed to work. Supreme power is not supposed to reside in the hands of unelected officials who have been appointed for life. In fact, this is not how our democracy is supposed to work. The Constitution does not give the Supreme Court these powers. The court has invented them for itself. They just making up shit. Yeah. Well, I don't understand how they can do all this if Biden is still in office. That's my point. So somebody needs to do some extreme resistance. But they can do it right now? They, they, something, I would rather them, I would rather Joe Biden right now tell everybody the Supreme Court is an illegitimate court and declare a constitutional crisis. Declare the constitutional crisis now while you're still in office. Because once you're out of office, once you lose the election in November, he's, by the way, once again, I think Donald Trump can beat Joe Biden straight up. But either way, we know it's going to be a close election. Yeah. And stranger things have happened. You know, let's just say they keep President Biden in and he wins. Let's just say they change the ticket and it's, you know, Kamala Harris and freaking uh, Josh Shapiro or Kamala Harris and Mark Kelly. That's the name I've been seeing today. Right. Um, and they, they, they do squeeze an election out when Donald Trump challenges it. Like he will, because he did it in 2020. What makes you think that Supreme Court, mm. with those loyalist judges on there that are loyal to Trump, what makes you think that they're not going to overturn the results of the election? We're acting like we haven't seen this before. Man, why are you stressing me out? See, y'all too young to remember 2000. I remember 2000. <laughs> I, remember I was watching CNN when they announced Al Gore as the right. president. And then somebody said, hold up, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Y'all thought he was finished? <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Something looks off with them Florida numbers. <laughs> right. I don't want to scare y'all. No, you already done scared <laughs> us. I just want y'all to go pay attention. That's all. Talk, I can't keep talk, up with talk, this. Talk to Meta AI about the Supreme Court. Talk to Meta AI about Project 2025. Man, but I'm going to learn all this information just for it to boil down to, I'm going to go vote just for the Supreme Court to tell me my vote's not valid, or I'm going to be in a civil war. So either way, well, what am I preparing myself? Well, like? here's where voting can help, and, 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 and that's why I don't want you to be defeatist. Democrats only have one defense with voter suppression. They always have, and that's large voter turnout. That motherfucker that, that you got that had less titties than Donald Trump, President Biden, he's not gonna he's not gonna encourage large voter turnout. Yeah, it's not happening. They need to get rid of President Biden just to energize people, just so people like you, just so people like Taylor, people like Alex, young people like y'all feel like you know what? Okay, I want to go out there and be involved. There's too many young people that are very upset about the the th- things like Gaza. You know, the war going on in Gaza, right? Like you saw all the protests on college campuses. It is so many people who are not energized by President Biden. He doesn't represent where America is going. He represents where America has been. And so what I would like to see even at the Democratic National Convention is I would like to see him give a concession speech. I'd like to see him pass the torch. And I want to see the Democrats put up their next wave. I want to see the governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, up there. I want to see the governor of Maryland, what's more up there. I want to see the governor of Pennsylvania, you know, Josh Shapiro up there. I want to see Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett up there. I want to see Bakari Sellers talking at the Democratic National Convention. I want them to motherfucking say, coming to the stage, Olivia Pope and Kerry Washington comes out that <laughs> motherfucker. I'm dead serious. She, the, the, uh, Republicans had Amber Rose. That's true. And, and Kerry Washington has spoken at Democratic National Convention before. But I want them to introduce her as Olivia Pope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like really come out there, drop some bars. Like they got to show that if they next. They do that. I'm voting. That's I'm voting 100. You, you see how easy fight. it is, you <laughs> fucking dumbass Democrats. This is yeah. why they need to fire everybody on these motherfucking campaigns. Y'all don't know shit. Yo, they need to give us a bonus episode of Scandal. I know it's over, but just... shit, you just saw one. No, you said I don't you thought want, the president. You one. said you didn't think the presidential assassination was real. No, that, that happened on Scandal. <laughs> that, was scary. that was an episode of Scandal. That was a scary movie. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. should they should run the president from scandal. <laughs> he, he would get more people Yo, come honestly, out. Honestly, <laughs> that up. part. But I'm gonna tell you something else y'all ain't paying no attention to. 
Donald Trump went from the black power fist to the hell Hitler to the black power fist to the hell Hitler. I saw no, he that. Didn't. Nobody's paying attention. Play the video. Yo, I no, saw that. Didn't. Man, no. that shit was like when that shit was like when R. Kelly did the come pee. You know what? Yo, I gotta was, get the hell up out of here. I'm I telling you, I can't live here no more. Watch. I'm surprised nobody caught nobody that shit. Nobody's calling. Play the video. <laughs> He did the black power fist, then he did the hell Hitler, the black power fist, and then the hell Hitler. Everybody keep throwing up the fist. Yeah. Watch the whole video, yo. Watch the video. Okay, we we'll be looking at it. Okay. Put the sound on, Taylor Gang. He's not saying nothing. Probably 20 million people. And you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something Everybody was a say, gun expert a when it happened. first happened. It was like, those aren't real shots. I heard real shot. God was really with him. Say what y'all want. Yeah. All Satan. Satan got a kingdom, too. But <laughs> some, kingdom. somebody moved him out the way. Now watch this. Now watch when he come up. Take a sir. Hold on, let me get my shoe. I thought the Secret Service was supposed to cover you the whole time. Like, I didn't know the Secret Service covers you and let you up and then... Because they don't know if the shooter's down. They don't know how many shooters it is. If there is black that's, people in it, people will be scattering. Like, that's another... Like, that's why I was confused, too. But what if there's nowhere to run? Niggas go like this. What do you mean there's nowhere niggas to run? Niggas start trampling niggas. That's all they show? They show the whole video? Oh, no, scroll to the next one. There's another one. Like, I watched it. Now watch okay, me get we up. are watching live at a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, where former President Trump was speaking on the stage. Look at this. And he goes, wait. Black power fist. <laughs> Black power fist. Black fight. He says, fight, fight, fight. Now watch this. Hell Hitler! No. Son. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. That was like the R. Kelly okay. come. That had to be him like this. No, he didn't. No, he it, went, it went like that. I think he was trying to wave. No, he did it, and then he, he went back to the fist. He went back to the fist. Go find another. Go to the video on YouTube, Taylor. Right. That, no. I'm telling you, I'm man. Telling, he no. he, he did the he black power fist. Hell Hitler, black power and fist. Hell Hitler. And that's the other thing, too, right? We talk about him having rhetoric that incites violence. Why would you get up and say, fight, 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 fight who? You don't even know who the fuck just shot at you. You don't know where this came from. Who you want people to fight? I'm not gonna lie, that shit was fire. <laughs> like, it, like, to, it to, take a, to take a shot, a get problem. up, blood fire, on your y'all. face. Like, a it, I mean, come on, man. Give props for props. You gotta dude. give No, props. I don't. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Give props come for props on, to son. do, yo. This, is, this, was, he, this was fire. This was, this was, uh, this was actually... <laughs> y'all niggas is kiki and egging the, this shit on. I'm not egging nothing on. I'm just are. responding to what happened, Nyla. This is what, this is what happened. Why, why even entertain this? Nah, but you could, be, you could be objective. Forever the showman. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Black power fist goes in the air. Watch. Watch. Give me my shoes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so the action for the shoes? Okay. Fight. 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 Crowd goes wild. Now watch this. Hell Hitler. Oh, Why is he <laughs> cutting off right after? <laughs> that's that's the, what I'm saying. I know, that's well, also, wild. I just feel like, cut. yo, if you just got shot at, why would I feel comfortable even standing up here going like that's this? That's my whole point. I don't want to get the fuck. That's my whole point. But that's why I feel like it's not real. It's definitely real. It was very real. But that's one of the conspiracy theories where it's just like, all right, if there was it really a lapse in judgment on uh, secret security or did somebody really want him to be taken out? And because, oh, they didn't, they missed him the they first round. They turned around, the blind eye. Now they're like, oh, let's prop him up. <laughs> let's give him another open shot for That's why it doesn't like, make, no. It oh, makes all the sense. I don't think. No. I'm just saying. That's crazy. No, because what Alex social, is saying is absolutely right. The if I'm Donald security, Trump, I'm firing they, everybody. Well, they if they put him back up to allow him guy. to have another shot, why they ain't shoot at his ass again? Well, he was They dead. killed the guy already. But the Secret Service Allegedly. was already pointed at the guy for a good, like, 15 seconds before he took a shot off. Chris said the realest shit like, the other day. Like, that shit is crazy. This, Chris, none of this makes any sense. Chris said this the other day, and it made so much sense to me about the... Oh, let me see if I can find it. He said, um... I wish Chris was here right now. Uh, da, 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 let me see. You want to call? He just, uh, you know, on uh, the beach with the gays. Yeah, I don't want to call. I don't want to no. interrupt the vacation. <laughs> I can't find it. I'll let him talk about it when he comes back. But he had a good, uh, he had a good, he had a I, he had a good theory about the whole Secret Service thing and what Trump is going to do next with the Secret Service. Yeah. Damn, I wish he was keep here. Cutting it off. No, I think so. Right. Yeah, why they keep cutting it off? Probably going to get rid of it and privatize it, right? Yeah. Boom. That's, that's what exactly what that, that's yeah. exactly what he was saying. He was saying that he thinks uh, when 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 Trump gets back in the White House, 
That's He'll point to this event, use it as a reason to disband the Secret Service, have his own private security, which will become like his version of the SSS Nazis, and then that will no. a tur- that will a turn into a, 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 a private army, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Damn. he said. That's what Chris Morrow said. Let's pay some bills and let's come back and talk about some other things, but man. Th- doesn't huh? that make it seem like this was always his plan to begin with? Listen, you can't plan to get shot in the ear. Especially yeah. someone else died. That's too, too close. Takashi planned to get shot. Takashi planned to get kidnapped. I'm just saying, I don't planned. even understand. Yeah, like they it's actually- a difference between somebody actually doing it. Takashi's not dead, shoot. and neither is Trump. Takashi didn't get shot at? They do things for the gram. Takashi didn't get shot. Oh, my God. Takashi did not get shot at. All right, well, he got kidnapped. Donald Trump got shot And that wasn't at. that wasn't a plan. Yeah, I don't think he planned that. <laughs> like, but by the way... They really it, were trying I, to not, rob not, Listen, here's the thing. I'm not even mad. I'm not even upset with Donald because that is the generation we live in. Nobody believes anything. I don't believe none of these niggas. And that's why... That's why I'm not mad at people when they keep pushing the Project 2025 thing because when something sticks to people's minds, when you actually got people caring about something yeah. they should care about, you keep pushing that. Yeah. Taraji P. Henson got on the BET stage, bought up Project 2025. For whatever reason, it was sticky. It stuck to people. People started caring about it. They was Googling it. That's they were paying it attention. About. So when you get people to give a fuck, you got to push them toward that. So I understand it. But the Supreme Court is a clear and present danger right now. And people are starting to pay attention to so that. Is there anything that we can do to help the Supreme Court situation right now, or is it all on Biden and the Democrats that are currently No, I mean, it, I mean, at this present moment, it's all on Biden and the Democrats. Come November, you know, once, like I said earlier, you know, Democrats always rely on the largest voter turnout in American history you know, to fight voter suppression. You know, it's hard to contest an election that you win by like 7 million, 8 million votes. I don't know if that's going to happen in 2024. And to be honest with you, I don't know if uh, they'll even look at seven, eight million votes and say these votes are accurate. I really don't. I really I'm, I really think what I'm saying right now about the Supreme Court is going to be more evident in November. I really believe that. Mm. I'm telling you all right now that that court is not a legitimate institution anymore. That court is corrupt. And I'm not saying that because they're majority majority conservative. I'm saying it because they're majority corrupt. Come November, when the election happens, y'all going to see. That's what, that's when y'all going to really see. And y'all will stop looking at me like I'm fucking uh, Rafiki from The Lion King. <laughs> now, let's pay some bills, man. And then I want to come back and talk about some other things. Something a little more positive, hopefully. It's all it's all culture. Okay. Let's do all culture. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over five million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in, okay? Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community today. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. With the finals over, the hoops action doesn't stop on Prize Picks. Women's basketball is still heating up with stars like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese looking to make names for themselves alongside greats like Brianna Stewart and the face of the W. NBA, South Carolina zone. The throne is hers. The crown is hers. Asia Wilson. You could win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code IDIOTS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code IDIOTS on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Now, let me give you all some examples of player projection lineups, right? Okay, player projection lineups. Like, for example, if last night you would have said Caitlin Clark would have had more than 18 assists, everybody would have looked at you like you was crazy. But you would have been absolutely correct because she did break the WNBA record for uh, assists in a game with 19 assists. So that is an example of a player projection lineup. That's how you would win money on prize picks. So once again, download the prize picks app today and use code IDIOTS for a first deposit matchup to $100. That's code IDIOTS on prize picks for a deposit matchup to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Salute the built. All right, uh, listen up all you renters. Ever feel like you're stuck in this loop of rent payments, just watching your money vanish in the thin air? It's time to turn that rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. That's where Built 
comes in, okay? Built is breaking ground as the first rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Even if you're still rocking the old school rent check vibes, Built Rewards has got your back. They'll mail the check for you. It's like having a personal rent paying assistant. Every month, pay your rent and watch the Built points roll in. Use points to jet off on a dream vacation. Put your points toward a flight or hotel stay with 500 plus airlines and 700,000 plus hotels and properties. Use your points to sweat it out, okay? Redeem your points to book fitness studio classes. You can also use your points toward a future rent payment or toward a future down payment on a house. Pay rent hassle-free through the Built Rewards app. Your rent game will get a major upgrade, okay? Built Points has been consistently ranked the highest value point currency by the points guy in bank rate. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash idiots. That's joinbilt.com slash idiots. Make sure to use our URL so they know we sent you. Joinbuilt.com slash idiots to start earning points with your rent payments today. Now, Get Honest or Die Line Why Small Talk Sucks is available everywhere you buy books right now. You see it. Uh, salute to Tampa, Florida. I was in Tampa, you know, last week with our uh, station in Tampa. We just flipped signals in Tampa. We used to be on 95.7. We on another signal now. I can't remember the signal right now. But thank you to everybody I met in Tampa. Thank you to Pecan. Uh, thank you to Mimi. Thank you to my man D Strong. Thank you to Queen B. Um, who else did I meet out there in Tampa? A lot of people, man. But just salute to y'all for coming out and make sure you go get my new book, Get Honest to Die Line, Why Small Talk Sucks. This is my third book, national bestseller. I really thank you and appreciate the support. And Big Nyla, Big Nyla has a church announcement. Yes, but the station is 95.7 for Tampa. I know, but they changed it. They changed the signal now. Well, that's what they had at the thing. I know. They just changed it, like, literally this week. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yes, so if you guys are in New York City, I'm doing an event with Rhapsody Certified Vibe. We do these monthly showcases where we highlight dope artists. So we have Queen Rhapsody, who's going to be touching the stage. Um, it's going to be a really special night, and she's going to be doing songs from her new project, Please Don't Cry, album of the year, if you haven't listened to it already. And... Uh, Nico Brim's gonna open Sebastian Michael. And then also while we're here, man, Certified Vibe also got Killing the it with merch. the merch. You know what I'm saying? Culture bag. Make sure you guys tap in. Get you one. Shirt. I like know, it. Certified in the front. Okay. Culture in the back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's my church. Nice. I had to mm -hmm. adjust myself because I hate how I be looking. I was gonna say, like, what are you scared of? Because y'all be putting out so many brand idiots clips that I love. But. <laughs> When noodles hit me, noodles fat fucking, noodles fat <laughs> funky say? ass hit me and was like, yeah, embrace your dad body, bro. Get chubby. Oh. No, and I'm I... like, no, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's the chair, oh. motherfucker. Don't you think for one second. <laughs> that that's the chair. Me, don't think for one second. Happy belated born day, too, Noodle. Don't think for one fucking second that me and you are even remotely. Noodles is definitely no, embracing that hell body. No, me and my, me, salute to my cousin Tony. Me and Perm and my wife, we be... We work out heavy, okay? That's the chair that got me looking like that sometimes. Y'all are in good shape, both of y'all. <laughs> exactly. So I want to say this, uh, Nyla, how, what, 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 what number certified vibe is? First of all, how long have you been doing certified vibe? Almost a year. September, make a year. September. Now, Nyla started doing a segment on Breakfast Club called Pass the Aux. Yes. Pass the Aux, evolved, pull up the complex uh, hip-hop media list, Taylor. Cause this is where I'm going with it. Nyla started a, 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 a um, she did the segment on Breakfast Club called Pass the Ox. I said, Nyla, you got to turn this into a live event. There's no live events happening in New York for new artists. You know, back in the day, SOBs was the place to go if you wanted to go see new artists. We all, you know, used to go to SOBs to watch all the new up and coming artists, right? And so Nyla took it upon herself to start what was Pass the Ox Live. And that evolved into Certified Vibe Live. How many of you said you've done so far? Almost 12. Like, Almost like 12. Nine. Oh, wow. Congrats. She's done them in the New, New York. They got so big. No, stay, stay, stay at the top. They, she's done them so... She, they got so big that she's done them in New York. Atlanta, she, Atlanta, LA, D.C. Yeah. We're going to Miami. Hey. Texas. Yeah. She, she created the dopest live... New artist showcase in the business. You don't believe me? Ask people like Cortez Bryant. Rhapsody is performing there tomorrow. Rhapsody got all her new artists that's going to be there uh, tomorrow. And 
this is the 2024 hip hop media power rankings came out from Complex. Nyla was number 24 on the list uh, last year. She's not on the list this year. And this just lets me know that people at Complex not paying attention. The right? thing is. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. It's no, okay. go. Go do your rant. I'll rant after. <laughs> I'm, all I'm simply saying, first of all, I, I, I don't have no problem with the Complex list. Complex put me at number four. Salute to y'all. You know, thank you. Anytime I'm acknowledged anywhere, I appreciate it. Um, only thing I would say about the complex list, at some point you're going to have to start defining what power is, right? Because it says the 2024, make that bigger, Taylor. You know I'm getting up there in age, okay? I want to re read some things on this list, and I'm going to tell you the gripes I have with the list, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's start. Last year, we published our inaugural hip-hop media power rankings. Joe Budden took the top spot. Fierce commentary ensued from those both on and off the list. Life moved on. The hip-hop media ecosystem continued its relentless churn. I didn't have a problem with Joe Budden being number one last year. He deserved to be number one last year. But then in late March, the sudden release of an incendiary Kendrick Lamar verse on a song from Future and Metro Boomin called Like That bought a simmering megastar beef to full boil. Many back and forth followed, and the Kendrick Lamar Drake war took our timelines hostage. It hasn't let go since, and the ongoing beef stimulus has provided endless fodder for hip-hop media. Those who leaned in hardest benefited greatly, while some who stayed out of the fray lost ground. I want y'all to remember that paragraph when I start really ranting a little bit. The 2024 Hip Hop Media Power Ranking reflects the, the, the shifts that have resulted as the smoke from the battle is cleared. There are seven newcomers who weren't ranked at all last year, plus a new name at the number one spot. No surprise who the number one should have been this year. Academics, that's not even, uh, that, that's not even in question. I do wonder why they do the list so early though. I feel like they, and they did it last year too around the springtime. I wonder why they don't do it around the holidays. Why did they do it? in May and June and like why? They need viewerships because it's dying off because of <laughs> shit like this. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> as with the previous list, the ranking below reflects the current moment, not the entirety of one's career. We ranked each media personality based on their impact in the space. Since the release of our inaugural list in 2023, complex employees and hosts were not eligible for inclusion. Let the date debates commence. I disagree with that. I think complex employees and hosts should be eligible. Uh, last year, people like BDOT should have been on the list. Speedy. And I think this year sure. should have been the same thing. Um, let's go down the list. First of all, I want to say this. No, let me go down the list first before I say what I'm going to say. Gay P, number 25. Salute to Gay P. Gay P doing his thing. I think Gay P actually should have been higher with On The Radar. Mm -hmm. On The Radar is having a real, real, real impact in hip hop culture. Honestly, I don't understand how Gay P is not top 15. I can even make arguments for him for top 10. All right, I don't see how Gabe P is just at number 25 because he has the premier place for artists to go do freestyles. Drake went there to freestyle. Meek Mill went there to freestyle. Big, Big Sean. Sean just released a freestyle there. Like, hip-hop is that. Yep. That is hip-hop, mm -hmm. period. What is, is hip-hop without rap? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Gabe P, there's no way he should just be at number 25. He should be much higher. Let's go down the list, Nyla. Number 24, Arshon, Arshon Jawade. I don't know the person. I don't know him. And I don't, mean, I don't mean that as a diss. I'm just not in, I'm not in the loop. I'm not hip. This is what lists are good for because now I can go check them out because I saw, I saw people talk about Arshon and how they watch kids take over. So now... I'm going to check out Kids Take Over. Fair enough. Okay? Jason Lee. Salute to my guy, Jason Lee. I don't think Jason Lee should be on a hip-hop media power ranking list. Yep. I think Jason Lee is a pop culture critic. I think Jason Lee... Jason Lee, is a, he's, he's broad. He's a, entertainment. He's entertainment. Not hip-hop. Yes. He's, con he's, just, he's, he's running for a Congress seat in Stockholm, California. Oh, is he? No, not yeah. Stockholm. No, I'm, I'm saying it wrong. It's not Stockholm. It's, um, it's definitely in California, though. He's running for Congress. Hold on. Let me look wow. it up. I don't want to get my man's hometown wrong. But that was my complaint, too. Y'all got non-hip-hop people on a hip-hop list. Yeah, just because you black. Just cause Stockton. You... I'm sorry, Stockton. Hollywood Unlocked is a major platform. Any, any media list, any cultural media list, Hollywood Unlocked absolutely should, should be on. I don't believe, like, listen, it says known for humorous commentary on pop culture. 
insider info and headline grabbing interviews. All of that is true. I don't believe Jason Lee should be on a hip hop media power ranking list. I just think I, I look at Jason Lee as, as broader than that. That's just my Agreed. you know per personal opinion. I guess they would put him on because didn't he have the Kanye interview? What? That was what? Yeah, that was a couple interview. years ago. Oh, it was a couple years ago. And oh, everybody right. had that interview. Right. He was on Drink Champs. Just, he was on. It. That was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Let me see. Most more. Okay, hold on. Most memorable moments in the past year. DDG interview. Joiner Lucas interview. I oh, disagree. Bro. That's the I like both those interviews, but I don't think that that, that was uh, Jason Lee's best interviews of the past year. I don't think those were his most memorable moments. Well, I will say, even last year in these little bios, the bios don't really be accurate either. Because mm. whatever the fuck was in mine was inaccurate as hell, but I was just like, you know what, whatever, I'm on the list, I'll take the flowers. And I'm gonna tell you something else we don't give Jason Lee enough credit for. Jason Lee has one of the best award shows. Do you know how hard it is to start an award show from scratch? Jason Lee started Hollywood Unlocked. He had fucking Sharon Stone at his award show this year. Like, the, the things that he's doing, honoring, you know, uh, Jonathan Majors with an award, having Ayanna Bonzant honor him. Like, Jason Lee is a big, big motherfucking deal, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So when they say few in hip hop media are as well connected as Jason Lee, Jason Lee is a, is, is a lot more than hip hop media. Jason Lee is like, He's like what Perez Hilton was back in the day, or like what what somebody like Andy Cohen is now. Like that's the that's, that's the way I look at a Jason Lee. Agree. You know what I'm saying? Like he's in he's in in that space, and he's getting his mogul on. And how was he 11? And if you gonna put him on the list, how was he 11 last year and 23 this year when he's only bigger this year? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. He's he's bigger as an entity. Let's keep going, Taylor Gang. Let's keep going. Adam 22. Keep scrolling. Ain't got no problem with that. Uh, Van Lathan, my guy, Van. Salute to Van. Now, I'm going to tell you, this one This one irritated me, and I'm going to tell you why. Van's my guy. Featured on Higher Learning. Love the Higher Learning podcast with him and Rachel. Scroll up. Really Listen to what it said about Van. Known for level-headed commentary about hip-hop figures, most memorable moments in the past year, breakdowns of the Kendrick Drake beef on Higher Learning. Y'all don't listen to Higher Learning if y'all think that Van's most memorable moments and his most memorable breakdowns are breakdowns of the Kendrick Drake beef. Van, just like Jason Lee, talks about society. Mm -hmm. Van talks about politics. Van talks about life. Van talks about things that actually impact us as people. This first line in this bio pissed me the fuck off. Not pissed me off. I'm just being uh, performative for the pod. But most, most sensible isn't the sexiest superlative. But in a world of cheap, clickbaiting, and formulaic hot takes, it's a damn honorable one. Why is it most sensible Considered a sexy superlative. Who at Complex wrote that and thinks being sensible isn't a sexy superlative? You goddamn right it is, regardless of where you're at. If somebody says you're a very sensible person. But it's not, though, because these other niggas on the list want to be on the list. But that's my point. It's the way they paint the picture of a lot of these people that I don't like. Mm. And it makes me... Two things I want to know. What do y'all think is hip-hop, number one? And what do y'all think is power? Yo, that's what I want to know, too, after this year. Because now, between the Kendrick Drake thing and just everything that's going on, I feel like the definition is blurred. Yes. I don't like how they talked about my man. It's not that I don't like how they talked about Van. I just feel like they are, they're, they're, they're doing a disservice to hip-hop by acting like somebody... Like saying sensible. things like sensible is it yeah. something that happens in hip hop? I I, I I didn't I didn't like that. So I'm not too. This is the first time I'm hearing about this list. Um, if they getting so much stuff wrong, don't you feel like this might just be like outrage marketing? Which is why I don't want to talk about this damn list. No, I, like, I want to talk it about might it. Be I, one of I, those I, things that they're doing on purpose so it gets people upset, so they talk about it. I only, I really just I, I'm being honest. I'm talking about this list because there's people I want to give props to. Okay. Like I I I, I want to talk. I want to talk about how I feel about some of these people. Like how, the respect I have for a Jason Lee, the respect I have for a Gabe Peter, the respect I have for a Van, the respect I have for a Nyla. I act. I want to talk. I want to talk about that because there's. Not me. There, the There's list. somebody that should be on this list, but we'll get to it. <laughs> Still I'm not top but, listen, but 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 Van Van said himself, I'm not hip hop. <laughs> wow. I'm not a hip hop media personality. Mm. 
Van is broad. Like, Van's not doing just hip-hop. And you're, uh, the reason I keep saying Van is broad is because by the time we get to my list, you're going to understand what I'm saying when you get to mine. Now, let's scroll up, Taylor. Salute to Van. Um, Trap Lord Ross definitely deserves to be on here because nobody's doing what Trap Lord Ross is doing. These true crime documentaries, you know, I've definitely found myself on YouTube going down a rabbit hole watching uh, some of these. The first one that got my attention was the, the King Von one. That shit is so crazy. <laughs> it's know? so well done and it's so long and yeah. you'll sit there and watch the whole two or three hours worth of that shit. Yeah, you sound like he's talking about a dick. Um, listen, <laughs> Trap Low Ross. Yo, get you your brain you that like you did. No, you're you the did only so, person who went sound, there. No, I, 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 that, you, that was crazy. You like, it's so long and it was so, <laughs> and it was so well crazy. done. Was, I could be there for two or three <laughs> hours with it. Like, God damn. <laughs> Trap Low Ross, I, and, and he should be on the list. Uh, let's see who else. Let's go up, scroll up, scroll up. Nadeska, salute to Nadeska. This was, I, I have no problem with Nadeska, salute to her. I just look at Nadeska as more of a, as a moderator. Yeah. No, but she has a podcast. I, I thought she had a podcast and it's, it's with uh, Lowe and Ebro. Yeah, but I, she's not just like the moderating host. Like, I Oh, she, she has an opinion on yeah. that? Oh, okay, see, I did, okay, I didn't know that. All right, okay, I don't have no problem with this then. But with that said, Lowe should be on this list too. He's not. Go Scroll up, because uh, I like Lowe takes on that show. Sway Calloway. All right, let's talk about it. At some point, we got to stop putting the icons on these lists. We got to stop putting the people who are already home on these lists, and I'm going to tell you why. Last year, they had Sway ranked number 23. This year, they had race Sway ranked number 18. It, it, it does a disservice to Sway in his storied career because you have a new generation of people who don't understand why Sway is on the Mount Rushmore of hip hop media. Mm. You don't understand what Sway has done for culture. You don't understand how Sway inspired everybody in this, well, I don't know if he inspired y'all, he definitely inspired me. Mm -hmm. I'm born in 1978. So when I looked at hip hop media and I looked at wanting to be in this game and I looked at people I wanted to be like, Sway Calloway was absolutely one of them. It's Sway and Andy for me. It, it's word. Sway, not only was Sway all over the radio, Right. With legendary shows, you know, like Sway, the Sway and King Tech show. He was putting out albums. He had artists coming on there like Biggie freestyling. He was interviewing people like Tupac. He was the face of MTV. Yes. We don't talk about that enough. Yeah. There was a lot of white personalities at MTV, the Kurt Loaders and all of them. There's not too many people, black or white, Puerto Rican, whoever, who watched MTV and didn't realize Sway Calloway as a face yeah. of MTV, yeah. right? So you don't get it. And then for him to be on Sirius Satellite Radio all these years, still having one of the most impactful morning shows with Sway in the morning, he's in the Radio Hall of Fame, he's an icon. I don't even think that they should have them on lists like this anymore. Like, we need to start that. You got to do something more permanent and iconic to represent and celebrate them. Sway Calloway is on my hip-hop media Mount Rushmore. And the fact we ain't never seen him without a hat ever. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me a person that we ain't never seen without a hat. Eventually, we saw LL Cool J without a, yeah. without a hat. Eventually, we saw Papoose without a hat. Stupid. We have never <laughs> seen Sway. Sway was in the White House. You know in the White House you gotta take your hat off? Sway was in the motherfucking White House interviewing Barack Obama with the fucking hat on, bruh. Yeah, that's great. Sway different, different, different. Yeah. Scroll up, Taylor. <laughs> Scroll up. Angela Yee, respect, you know what I mean? Way up with Angela Yee. She's doing her thing on the show. She Angela Angela's broad too, but you know, Angela Kim comes from, you know, lip service. She comes from Shade 45. You know, of course, Breakfast Club. I'm not mad at it, you know? I'm not, I'm not mad at her being on the list. Like, you know, her, and she, she brings a lot. She does do a lot of hip-hop discussions on the show because Mano's on the show every day. You know, B-Dot comes on the show a lot. So I'm not mad at it in any way, shape, or form. Big Boy, salute to Big Boy. Once again, an icon who should not be on the list because I think that you have to find something else to honor the hip-hop icons. It's good to see them still moving and shaking, still being top 25, but this ranking doesn't do any justice to the career of Big Boy. 
the only pushback I'll give that because then if they keep the icons off the list, they're gonna be like, yo, how you keep the icons off? And nah, what if well, put it like this? When they do when they do rap lists, right? When they do top five, top ten rap lists of this era, a lot of times you ain't gonna see Scarface on there. You ain't gonna see Hove on there. You're not gonna see Nas on there. And even when I do see them on there, I still think it does a disservice to have them. Like you say, let's just say you do a, a hottest of rappers of the year list, right? Yeah. And Nas put out an album, and you got Nas number seven, number eight, but and it's not a diss, but you got like Skiller Baby number one, number two. Salute to them, but there's a difference between hot and legendary. But that's it's, what they're ranking. They're just saying who's the most powerful right now, or who's the actually it should be like the hot hip hop media ranking. Like it shouldn't be power. That's that's the power. wrong. That's the wrong. It should word. be hot. I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Because I don't know what power is. Like like they they haven't defined to me what power is. When you are an icon, when you are a legend, when you can be on the Mount Rushmore of hip hop media, then you're you should be considered. You know, that's power to me. Yeah. That's what Big Boy is. Big Boy is one of them. Once again, in the Radio Hall of Fame. He's home already. Salute to him for being on the list. I just think that it should be something, something else. Okay. And say, let me read. Just in case you forgot how important Big Boy is to the West Coast, he had to pop out at Kendrick Lamar's Victory Lab concert in LA last month and remind everyone exactly who the fuck he is. Is Kendrick played not like us six times in a row? The legendary radio host danced on stage with many of LA's LA rap's most important figures playing his own part in the historic moment. I want y'all to realize, oh, shh, don't say it. <laughs> What you about this? Hold on. What you say? What, what, look, do like this. Okay, right, right. You wait. Okay. You wait. Because I, this is what the fuck, this is the reason I'm even going through this fucking list. Okay, I want y'all to remember that. And remember what it said about Kendrick and Drake at the top of the list. Scroll up, uh, Taylor. Can't say Scroll it. up. This no, not yet. Not yet. We, I wanna, I'm saving that for the end. Right. Angie Martinez, we bow down to Angie Martinez. We worship Angie Martinez yes. in these hip hop media streets. Y'all have no idea when we was going back and forth with Hot 97 back in the day, how I always said to myself, damn, I'm probably never gonna get a chance to talk to Angie Martinez because of this stupid shit. When Angie Martinez <laughs> left Hot and joined the NWO, which was Power 105, that was one of the greatest days of my life, okay? <laughs> I look at Angie Martinez when she walks in the building now in awe. I'm like, damn, that's Angie motherfucking Martinez. She, <laughs> you you, you, you don't understand like what people like her mean to the culture. That's why you should go read Angie Martinez's book. Yes. Go read Big Boy's book. Angie Martinez, Angie Martinez might, if, if I had to make a list, literally, of top 10 greatest hip-hop interviews of all time, Angie probably will have four to five of them. Hmm. Yeah. Straight up. Four to five of them. Think about the moments. Think about R, R. Kelly getting pepper sprayed yeah. at Madison Square Garden. Hmm. R. Kelly, Angie Martinez is at the show. She ain't even on air. They're like, yo, Angie, R. Kelly and Jay-Z want to come to the station. Yeah, that was they crazy. Take whoever's off the air, because those two only wanted to talk to Angie. <laughs> Interviews R. Kelly, they got to get him out the building, because Jay comes on. Yep. That's just different historic moments that you can't ever... You, you, you can't script that kind of shit. Like, t t Angie's just different. You know how I felt when I saw Angie and Brown Sugar? Do you know what kind of inspiration <laughs> that gives a person? Like, yo, I want to do that. Yep. I want to do that. You're talking about a different level of icon, a different level of, 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 of just his history when you're talking about people like Angie Martinez. I don't think having them on lists like this at these rankings, do them any justice? And if they were top, if they, I just, I just don't. I just, that's just my personal opinion. You know, I'm, I'm allowed to have that. We worship Angie Martinez. Yeah. She's on my hip hop Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Okay. So when Angie calls, I drop everything. There's a couple times she like she booked WTF, and I'm like, well, no matter what I'm it's doing, Angie I just drop. Ma. Yeah, exactly. What are we talking about? Once again, Radio Hall of Fame. Every woman in radio wanted to be like two women. If you were in hip hop radio, you wanted to be like Angie Martinez or Wendy Williams. There's a bunch of people right now doing a doing a lot of bad Wendy Williams impersonations, and no, it's not too many that can do what Angie Ma does because Angie Ma just has a different level of integrity with what she does, and just a different level of respect and reverence and love for the culture. This is a woman who has a 19-hour Tupac interview. I'm exaggerating with the number. How long is it, Nyla? 
Like three hours. It's about three hours. N- Nyla used to be Angie's intern and assistant. assistant. So she had to go through a lot of those tapes. Angie Martinez Wait. could have her own website right now with hip hop tapes. Is that the one she never put out? Isn't that never put out different you level of integrity? Have you heard it? I don't know anything that y'all talking about. Oh, you got to see oh, that's come crazy. She heard it and won't tell me Yo, a goddamn nah, thing about we talk, it. We're talking after I don't this. Know anything we're talking that after this. That's different, but think about crazy. the level of integrity. Who the fuck? Think, first of all, I, I don't. Who would be? Who would be akin to Tupac right now? Like, okay, okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> well, yeah, true, 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 true. We got, like, boom. Imagine this right now. Drake, Kendrick, Lamar, right? Mm. Height of their beef. Drake flies you out to Toronto. Kendrick flies you out to Compton. And you sit down to do an interview. You do an interview with either one of them. One of them's talking so crazy that you like, yo, this shit could really stir shit back up. And you say, I'm not putting this out. And she has never no. put it out. You tell me a personality that's going to do that now with a Drake or Kendrick and hold on to that shit. Different level of integrity, man. Mm-hmm. We worship Angie Martinez around these parts. She's too iconic for this these type of lists. Scroll up, Taylor. Bootleg Kev, my guy, absolutely. He actually should be higher. Bootleg Kev should have been on the list last year. He wasn't on the list last year. I thought it was a travesty when he wasn't on the list last year. He 100% should be on the list. That's my dude. Been knowing Bootleg Kev for a long, long, long motherfucking time. He's just one of them ones. I don't know what to tell you. You know, he's absolutely in the midst. He's part of generation now. He should be on the list. It's not even close. Anybody that thinks otherwise, they're just not paying attention to hip hop. I salute my guy, Bootleg Kev. I fuck with him heavy. Okay? Heavy, heavy. And you know, and when I say I fuck with people heavy, I ain't just saying that because I like their work. When I fuck with a person heavy, I'm going I'm to stamp them anywhere. I'm going to talk about them in rooms that they not in. That's what I do for people like Bootleg Kev. Uh, scroll up, Taylor, and been doing that. Little Yachty and Mitch. Salute to Little Yachty and Mitch. <laughs> Number 12, um, I guess. I didn't know they had some. Now they do the Safe Space podcast. Yeah. I've seen them have. I've seen them have a, a lot of good guests. I don't know where they should be ranked. They definitely should be on the list. I don't know where. Um, but yeah, they definitely should be on the list. I don't. I don't. I don't know where they should be ranked. But I, I think that they've had some good moments. They had a J Cole interview. Uh, who else had was on there? I remember the J Cole interview. Who else has been on that show, Taylor? Says Nala? Lucky interview. I have no idea. I like. I like. When Drake was on, I've there. seen them. With Drake, yeah, Drake was on there. Well, no, he was. Drake wasn't on there. Him and Lil Yachty did something together. I've seen them do enough to where I, I feel like I don't think them being on the list is is, is wrong. I don't, I don't know if I've seen them do that many hip hop interviews. Maybe I haven't been paying that much of attention, but I'm not mad at it. What else we got? N O R E Nori. He got to be top ten. There's no way Nori not top ten. You're bugging. How is Nori not top 10? Drink Chance. Drink Chance has been consistent for almost a decade. He went from 5 to 11. How? He's still the place for OG hip-hop artists to go. If there was no Drink Chance, where would OG hip-hop artists go to be able to tell their stories? The DJ Quick Problem interview they just dropped is fantastic. Let me read what they said about Nori, because I need to understand why he Nori dropped a handful of spots this year partially because drink champs didn't have as many high profile guests over the past year maybe the talent pot is starting to dry up a little bit but he still managed to make the most of his bookings when norium partner dj efn weren't chopping it up with schoolboy q that's not a notable g herbo that's not a notable Ludacris, that's not a notable they were consoling benzino that was a great interview who had clearly thrown back a few too many as he emotionally dressed addressed his longtime riff with eminem i appreciated that Nori's familiarity in the music industry puts interviewees at ease. No, Nori's tendency for pouring big glasses of alcohol yeah. puts interviews at ease, and their <laughs> unsisted responses can still go viral, along with NORE's energetic and charming mannerisms. That deserves a round of applause. It does, but he should be higher. Okay, what else we got? Nardwar. I haven't seen a Nardwar interview in forever. What am I? I, I, I when, he, he, and he was 22 last year, but he's 10 this year. What is the interviews he's done? Scroll up. And I think Nawar is legacy too. Most memorable moments in the past year. Tyler, the creator interview. I didn't see that one. Ice Spice interview. I didn't see that one either. I haven't seen any of them. Laser Dim. Why are you covering your mouth like your breath stink? Because I just have nothing to say. Laser Dim. And I don't want none of my facials to, to, oh. <laughs> to show. Yeah, but I think Nawar is legacy too. I mean, I don't. I can't sit here and really give a, a, a accurate critique on this because... Um, 
I haven't been been tapped in with it, you know, the, if he's on the list, salute. He's I think his legacy top ten seems a little bit high, but whatever. Let's see what else, Taylor. What we got? Who's number nine? How 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 are Gillian Wallow not top five? How complex? Gillian Wallow are so consistent. They do so much from hip hop to sports to reality stars. They're, they're, they're su supremely entertaining, not even just with the podcast, Million Dollars Worth of Game, the TV show that they do, Gillian Wallow's Adventures. How are Gillian Wallow not top five? You're bugging. I just don't even make, I don't, I don't understand this. Million Dollars Worth of Game, is, and they were number four last year, and they're number nine. What is it? What is it? Number nine? No, nah, that's not, yeah, that's not, nine. no, that's not right. That's just simply not right. And everything they do for the community. Like, and I don't think there's a safer space for younger artists more than million dollars worth of game. They are, the, they are the OGs that give a lot of these young people game and young people soak it up and they appreciate it. And they're, they're very consistent. Most memorable moments this past year, Young Boy Never Broke Again, Cardi B. Those were great interviews. What you think, Nyla? Ghostface interview was fantastic. Ghostface is my favorite rapper of all time. I like Gillian Wallow, they're funny. They should be top five. Who else we got, Not, uh, Taylor? Let's see. Anthony Fontano. I know of him, don't know enough of him to know if he should be number eight. Should he, Alex? I don't know. Pretty, yeah, he had a pretty big year. Like, I've yeah. never seen him interview nobody. Um, he's more, he like reviews albums. Yeah. And so like Drake actually responded directly to him from a bad review that he gave him. Is that the guy who got chased by Conor McGregor? No, I don't believe so. Uh, uh, Nate Diaz? Somebody chased? Oh, that was somebody else. Yeah, that was somebody else. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I have no commentary for Anthony Fontino because I don't know enough about him. Uh, go ahead, Taylor. What else we got? And not mad at Ebro at number seven. Uh, Vlad. I don't see how Vlad. Vlad should be top five too. <laughs> like, I, I, like Vlad. I, I, I guess six. Vlad. I don't see how Vlad not cracking the top five. I'm gonna be honest with you. Vlad and million dollars worth of game should be top five. Like, Vlad is, y'all can say what y'all want. There's not too many shows that have been staples in the culture for as long as Vlad. Vlad is older than Breakfast Club. Yeah. <laughs> I was going on Vlad when I was doing radio in Philadelphia. I've been knowing Vlad for, shit, I've been knowing Vlad for over 20. I've definitely been knowing Vlad for over 20 because Vlad used to do these DVDs called Beef. And are these mixtapes called Beef? And he used to put me on his Beef mixtapes. And I mean, the thing I like about Vlad too, Vlad is another one that I don't know if you can just pigeonhole, you know, to just hip hop. Because Vlad, you know, sits down and interviews a plethora of different guests. I mean, shit. <laughs> DJ Vlad helped solve the Tupac murder. If that shouldn't get you a higher ranking this year, what well, will? What, Nyla? <laughs> you should do Vlad. Well, you should you should do Vlad. Salute to Vlad. I think Vlad should be higher. Uh, what else we got, Taylor? Definitely. Elliot, you shouldn't be number five. Number four, Charlemagne the God. All right, now let me read this, right? Last year's ranking number three, featured on The Breakfast Club, The Brilliant Idiots, known for sensational commentary, asking provocative questions in his Donkey of the Day segment, most memorable moments in the past year, being sampled by Future and Metro Boomin on number one. Really? That's my most memorable moment in the past goddamn year? Okay, now... What can we say about Charlemagne? He is a mainstay in rap media, even as he continues to broaden his scope and find new ways to transcend hip hop. This is part of the reason he dropped the slot this year. The top three have displayed a hyper-focused commitment to hip hop coverage, but with that being said, he's still a beast. Charlemagne, of course, anchors the most popular hip hop morning show in the country, The Breakfast Club, and his brilliant idiot podcast with Andrew Schultz ate nicely off of the Kendrick and Drake buffet. No, he didn't. <laughs> he may be increasingly involved in political punditry or doing comedic guest spots on The Daily Show, but his views about hip hop still matter. There is a reason why you hear his voice sampled by Future and Metro Boomin on number one, off We Still Don't Trust You. He is one of the few talking heads who can still get an angry response from Drake. Like when he criticized the Scissor Collab slime you out last fall and the audience expects more from him, which is why he took heat for some of his soft Diddy commentary with great power comes, comes, the, great, comes the expectation of great takes. I didn't have soft Diddy commentary. Y'all should go listen to my Donkey of the Day complex and my Diddy commentary was actually real commentary because I simply said it bothers me when I see these hip hop icons crash and burn. 
how is that not how is that not a real take? But scroll up the one line that they said, because this is this is really my issue with the list. It says, uh, uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Okay. Well, uh, he is a mainstay in rap media, even as he continues to broaden his scope and find new ways to transcend hip hop. This is part of the reason he dropped the slot this year. Didn't Biggie say, I never thought hip hop would take it this far? Why are people being penalized for being most sensible, like Van? Why, why am I dropping a spot because I'm transcending hip hop? You should see me on CNN, MSNBC, Daily Show, my own late night talk show. You should see me on the New York Times bestsellers list, the USA Today national bestsellers list. You should see me with the Black Effect podcast, you know, and, and, and we have all of these podcasts that we're partnering with. You should see me and Kevin Hart's company, uh, you know, SBH with Audible, putting out all of these audio script, all this audio scripted content. You should see all of this and be like, damn, that's somebody from the culture. That's somebody from hip hop doing that. They shouldn't drop a spot because we're taking hip hop to different levels. Same thing with Jason Lee. I think Jason, that's what I mean when I say, why, why, why are you upset that people are transcending hip hop? I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to be the 50 year old person still complaining about not being on lists, beefing with screamers, doing goofy shit, you know, starting shit you know, online with rappers just to keep my name relevant. No, I want to do things and put myself in position to not just empower me, but to empower others. Because like I always tell y'all, if the things you build only benefit you, they're not big enough. But thank you for putting me on the list, Complex. I really do appreciate it. Number three, Kai Sinat. Salute to my guy, Kai Sinat. Can't sing Kai Sinat's praises enough. I think Kai Sinat is fantastic. Kai Sinat is just scratching the surface. Kai Sinat got $100 million on his schedule. He is everything. I've said this before on this, hip -hop, on this podcast. He's everything that you should love about hip hop. You know what I'm saying? He's fun. He's dancing. He's enjoying himself. He's having a good time. Salute to my man, Kai Sinat. He absolutely should be on this list. Um, and next year, he'll probably be number one. But to be totally honest with you, I don't see how Kai Sinat is not number one next year. He's not number one because Drake didn't come to his platform. Because Drake didn't come to his platform? Everybody's little comment has a Drake comment. That's true. But Drake was still feeding Kai Sinat information too, though. Mm. I actually, I actually, I'm not mad at the number two. Let's go to number two. I'm not mad at Joe Budden being at number two. But I can make a case for Kai Sinat being number three. Um, but I'm not, I'm not mad at, 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 at Joe being number two. You know, like that's 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 a that's a good spot. Like known for insightful commentary and insider perspective around hip hop in the industry. I think that, you know, um, one thing that Joe leans into a lot is being somebody who was a rapper, who 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 was in the industry and he takes it serious like a lot of the sports pundits do. Like when you see a lot of these sports pundits on these networks like ESPN, you know, um, FS1, people that actually played the game. Like the, the ones that actually played the game, they have a different level of insider information. They may not get everything right all the time and you may not agree with everything that, you know, they say all of the time. But being that they played the game, their perspective is different. And I think he leans into that better than every rapper turned podcaster. The only other person I think that does it as well is somebody like my man Glasses Malone with the No, the no Ceilings podcast. Now scroll up. I can't. I can't believe I said that many good things about Joe Budden. Uh, number one, DJ Academics got no problem with Big Ack at number one. Academics af absolutely should be number one because when it came to the Drake Kendrick beef, he was at the center of the Drake Kendrick beef. Drake was feeding him records. Shit, Academics still fighting for Drake now. Drake ain't even fighting. For, can, yo, Drake ain't even fighting for his life no more. Ack is. Ack is fighting for Drake's life. I respect it. That's his guy. That's his favorite rapper. Academics is fighting for Drake's life every single day. Man, he wants to say Kendrick won so bad, though. You can see on his face. He did, I think he did say he did won. He? If I'm not mistaken, okay. he's just, he just saying that it's not over. It is, Ak. It is, Let man. me be the first to tell you. It's <laughs> over. I've seen these hip-hop beats before. We're at the point in the battle that if Drake did drop some music right now and it was a diss to Kendrick, it's leftover french fries. It's like, it's like when you take the french fries out the refrigerator and you try to warm them back up. You don't think it could restart again? No. Can you, do, you like re, do you like reheating cold french fries? No. Exactly. Oh, well, if you have a... Um, an air fryer? Air fryer. 
Ain't no air fryer. <laughs> All the air fryers in Compton. Drake got to go get one to fucking heat them shit back up. He ain't going to Compton. It's not. It's it's not coming back. But you know, uh, what yeah. What's like two years late? Like, can no, any? No, it's oh, we see. I saw this before. Like, I just there, want, no, I'm just asking a question. I there, don't care for it. There, there was a time. God bless the dead. I remember when, like, Prodigy couldn't let the the Jay Z issues go, and he kept rapping about it, and it was just like, it's over, you know. Or and Jay Z. There was a time when Jay-Z kept going after Nas. And he put out an amazing record on the Blueprint 2. But it, it, we didn't care. It was over. And we still quote that shit now. Is it Uchi Wally Wally? Is it one mic? That's from that record. Quotable, but nobody cares. So, yeah, Act was at the center of all of this. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you all this, man. I just did all of this list. Just to say, Nala Shimon should have been on the list <laughs> because Certified Vibe is one of the biggest, you know, if, you know, it is the biggest, you know, live event. What's, what do you call those? Live showcase for new artists. That should have been on there. Nala's podcast, We Need to Talk, booming. That should have been on there. Nala doing her thing. But Complex, I'm going to tell you why your list, really, based off your criteria, lacks a lot of uh, validity. How are you going to tell me that this list is based off Drake and Kendrick Lamar and the role people played in the feud? I know. How are you going to tell me that? And then what was the other thing I marked that I said? Was there something else I marked that I... Oh, and how are you going to say the big boy? Salute the big boy. How are you going to say big boy gets props for being on stage with at the pop-up show? But y'all don't have DJ Head on the motherfucking list. Right. Niggas don't like the West Coast, and I'm not fine with it. Okay? <laughs> How is DJ Head not on this list? Yeah. DJ Head should be top 15 on this list this year, if not top 10. Yeah. How? Not only oh, we no. all know DJ Head's relationship with TDE, but yeah, Homegrown Radio has been, you know, uh, supporting TDE since day one. Not only did Head have inside information, Complex, at the pop-out show, three people had sets at the pop-out show. One's name was Kendrick Lamar. One's name was DJ Mustard. The other was DJ motherfucking Head. You cannot be serious, Complex. Complex, you need to do a redo. You need to do a redo and take somebody off this list and put DJ Head on. It's, it, yeah, yeah, that's, it's, it's beyond disrespectful for your criteria, based off your criteria, to not have DJ Head on the list. Am I fucking lying? Am I lying, Nyla? No, Head should definitely be on this list. He did the same thing academics was doing during the Drake and Kendrick People thing. People are saying um, Kim and Mace. Kim and Mace is sports. They was on complex sports list. Why, first of all, you all, don't try to step on DJ Head right now. I'm not. Yes, she did. Okay. I'm giving head. I'm giving. Can we go back? I'm giving head head right now. Oh my god. Okay. I'm giving head hawk to her. Go to the big boys thing. What they said about big boy was really what head was doing. Yes. Go to the big boy was on stage at the pop out. Yes. As if like that was an accomplishment. Not saying it's not an accomplishment, but Head was the one actually bringing out the West Coast. He had a whole set. He brought out a whole new wave of freaking West Coast artists. Yeah. He brought out Tommy the fucking clown. Head set the tone for the pop out show. Yeah. Now let's write that. Scroll right there. The big boy, big boy, big boy. It yeah. says, um, in case you forgot how important Big Boy is to the West Coast, he had to pop out at Kendrick Lamar's Victory Lab concert in LA last month and remind everyone exactly who the fuck he is. As Kendrick played Not Like Us six times in a row, the legendary radio host danced on stage with many of L.A. rap's most important figures. Head did that, too. He just wasn't exactly. dancing. Exactly. Like, Head what? had his own <laughs> set. Like, his, his name was on the fly. Right. You, you, no said, you said Big Boy played his own part in the historic moment. Head was, was a, a part of the historic moment. To your point, different look. Like, he's a legacy act, so he shouldn't be on this list. Head should yes. be on this list. It should be Head. Head's the one who's been... Before even the pop out, Head has already been ushering in the new wave of the West Coast That's right. for so long. So That's right. That's right. I, I don't this this shit don't make I, I And he got a new show where he's doing it now. He got a new show with Gina Views uh called Effective Immediately. They just had RJ on there, they yep. just had Blast on there. Like they're really the ones piping up the West Coast and Gina too. That's Gina's love Gina. been doing it as well. Gina's been having rappers do freestyle since 
since I met her. Like, I don't know. This list is like... It's not a, it's not a bad list. It's not a good list either. No, nah, it's not a bad list at all. You know what I'm saying? It's not a bad list in any way, shape, or form. It's not, it's not a bad... I can't say it's, it's not a bad list. I think I, th here's my thing. There's people on this list that should be on this list, so you can't say it's just a bad list. I just want to know what hip, what what Complex's definition of power is, and I want to know what their definition of hip hop is, and I want to know why the fuck DJ Head is not on this list. I actually think I, who wrote this list. Find the name of the person I, that's who wrote this list. I was looking for it. This one is this. Are they all written by different people? I, that's why I want to know. But, okay, they're all yeah, written they're by, different, by people. different people. I need all of this brain trust from Complex to get together and y'all should tell the people why DJ Head is not on this but list. But it's actually funny how they want to like put together a hip hop power ranking when Complex really didn't even do a good job covering the beef. There was mm -hmm. nobody from their team really covering anything. That's why, and for the people who is are- Is that true? I don't believe that. They didn't have any person who, Speedy didn't do anything covering the beef. Speedy should be, I like Speedy too, but I, see to me, somebody like Speedy, we need to do another list that's just like... And this is not a shot at Speedy. I like Speedy. I love I'm Speedy. Saying, he didn't do anything. We, we just need to do another list of dope media personalities. Like new... Because I, I would have... Speedy would be on my list. Um, the Need to Know podcast would be on my list. You know, of course, Nala would be on my list. Ivy Rivera would be on my list. Miles Jones would be on my list. Back on Fig would be on my list. You know what I'm saying? Gina Views would be on my list. DJ motherfucking Hey, <laughs> DJ Hop Tour! <laughs> would be yeah. on my motherfucking list. Okay? Do not. No. <laughs> you not give him that. DJ yo. Hawk too. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That needs to be Head's new drop, actually. Yo. I'm not, all, all jokes aside, though, I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that one day. I'm going to write my own list of media personalities <laughs> that I believe are doing their on thing. Your, on your B-Dot shit, his list be terrible, too. i seen the most recent one. B-Dot shit on purpose, man. i seen it the last one. I just kept scrolling. It felt like Trump getting shot. I'm like, I don't care. How, and I guess, I guess, <laughs> I, I guess B-Dot's not on this list because he, he worked for Complex, but B-Dot should be on this list. I didn't even know B-Dot worked for Complex. He did. He had a Complex show. He had brackets. You know I thought saying? he had a Complex show. Well, goddamn, Nyla, same different. I don't so know. I'm saying, why he not on the list? It's he old. should be on the list. And anybody that can put a list out and, and shake up shit up, shit, yeah. B-Dot should be on the list. You he know should what I'm be saying? where... Shit, Rob Markman should be on the list. I love Rob Markman's commentary. If y'all had Yo, the Amazon Twitter, show this year... Yeah, but even what he's been doing on Twitter has been going crazy. You what, didn't see it? Uh-oh, what you been doing? Oh, I forgot you're not on Twitter anymore. Rob pretty much every week does hip-hop news updates on Twitter. Oh, no, he I, see, no, I watch videos. them on YouTube. Yeah, they're very good, very yes. informative, very thorough, and yes. it's a trusted fucking source. A trusted fucking source. A lot of these niggas source. ain't really trusted sources. They just giving opinions, talking out their ass for clicks. That's why they got the audacity to put up here uh, wise sentiments or whatever the fuck it is. It's like, I don't know. I feel like we should do something for just popular and then something for trusted. I, I like that. Because there's back. a difference. And, I, and, and Ak, I saw what you said about what they said about you. I 100% agree. What they say and what he said. I, 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 don't, I don't even want to do it. You go read it yourself. But I 100% I, I agree. You know, don't make me number one and then kick my motherfucking back in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They kicked like, his back in? Yeah, they called, they called him like Donald Trump or some shit like that. They was like, he's like, he, he has like, what did they say? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, they said he's like he does Trump-like antics. Uh, for, and so how to act get to this point? For one, he capitalized on the media economy, which prior which prioritizes which prioritizes individual voices over nebulously operated media brands. The audience knows him, and so do rappers who develop sometimes cozy and sometimes controversial relationships with Act. He also adopted the persona of a rapper, melding swagger, theatrical fare, and a love for combat. I mean, honestly, Scroll that up. is Trump related. You know, but they actually called him Trump. Uh, that shit is somewhere. In it. Oh, see right there, he's bragged about wanting to vote for Donald Trump, and even no, it, it was some, it was something in there about Trump. It, it wasn't just a thing about Trump. I don't like what they wrote about him. Is basically what I'm saying. I, I don't like what they wrote about none of these people. Some of it, some of some of this stuff might have been accurate. The some little paragraphs it, don't hit. It don't hit. Long story short, thank you, Complex. But y'all got to tell me why DJ Head wasn't on this motherfucking list. And Nyla Small. And not well. People just hate black women, so I understand. I'm just playing. I just, no, you're right. I, I just wanted to pull honestly. that card. Because complex. Don't Are there any black women on this list? There's no. No, no there's uh, the Nadeska. girl. Is that, yeah, her. That's her. But Nadeska. outside that, complex don't even have any black women over there. There's no black women talent. There's nobody over there covering hip hop on a daily, and they don't invest in new talent. 
But I think the company is sinking, so that's why they got to do these ridiculous lists to get clicks and, you know, well, to meet their quota. Complex, if you think uh, Nyla's lying, come to her certified by Friday and night. There might be too many black women in there for them, you know what I'm saying? Because I actually <laughs> bring out the culture. Hey, you know? <laughs> Friday night, Rhaps Rhapsody is performing live. Rhapsody got a record label now, so she got her, all her artists performing. So Complex, send somebody to cover it, you know what I'm saying? So you can see what people like Nyla Simone is doing in the culture. But you probably still won't see it, because I don't know how you didn't see at the pop-out show that big-ass sign that said DJ motherfucking head with my big head homeboy with his hat on backwards, bringing out all of these artists from LA. I don't see how y'all missed that. Salute to my guy DJ Head. Let's pay some motherfucking bills, Taylor. <laughs> Chime. Summer should be fun, not financially stressful. With the Chime secured credit builder Visa credit card, it's easy to start building credit with everyday purchases and regular on-time payments with no annual fees or interest. And if your credit scores grow, so could your opportunities for lower rates on loans, like for a car or home. Use your Chime credit builder Visa credit card everywhere. Visa credit cards are accepted. You can build your credit using your own money. Access over 60,000 fee-free ATMs. That's more than the top three national banks combined. And you can find one near you with ease using the Chime app. Plus, you can use Chime to pay anyone. Chime members are not. And cash out your money fee free. Chime even offers fee free overdraft up to $200 with the Spot Me. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for Spot Me, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a credit card purchase or cash withdrawal that exceeds your balance. With Chime Secure Credit Card, you can improve your credit scores all summer long. Get started today at Chime.com slash idiots. That's Chime.com slash idiots. Chime feels like progress, okay? The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Scribe Bank N.A. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal and OTC advance fees may apply. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Chime.com slash discloses for details. What we got next? Oh, and, and, and thank you to Squarespace, man. Squarespace has been holding brilliant ideas down since the beginning. We've been here for 11 years. Uh, and thank you, Squarespace. Y'all been with us every step of the way. Um, Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place, all on your terms. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Tailor to your brand or business and optimize for every device. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Choose your website, starting point, and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Scratch your imagination online with Fluid Engine included in any new Squarespace site. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's get back to the show. Let's do some Asking Idiots, Taylor. Let's do some asking idiots, please. Louis Slime, what is the key to networking, Nala Simone? Um, I think don't actually go to it like with the intention of I'm trying to network, just actually establish real relationships. I like that. I like that. And I 100% agree with that. Um, to me, that is networking, though. Mm. Networking is wanting to establish real relationships. Like ne ne to me, networking is different than trying to get something from somebody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get something from you just because I'm networking with you. I'm networking with you because, you know, sometimes it's being close to a person. That's how you get some information. You know, sometimes it's being close to a person. That's how you get to see what's going on in certain parts of the culture. You know, that's what we're asking people like Complex to do. Do a little bit more networking. I don't think y'all <laughs> doing enough networking. You know what I mean? Not not because y'all, there's no way you should have missed head or Nala Simone on the list this year. You know what I'm saying? The great one, 0381. What's the craziest thing that's happened to or around you the first half of the year? What do you mean crazy? There's nothing that's considered crazy to me anymore. I'm be totally honest with you. Nothing surprises me anymore. I'm not shocked by anything anymore. Everything just elicits 
you know, a nonstop, constant series of what the fuck? For me, it was definitely negative, though. For me, it was definitely J. Cole apologizing that Dreamville. I did not see that shit coming. Mine was going to Kendrick Lamar. (laughs) That shit was crazy. (laughs) Mm. Why? I still don't know why people give J. Cole flack for that. I'm not giving him flack for it. I'm just saying it was it was unexpected because you dropped the disc record, exactly. you dropped the album, so we're there championing you, and then you. It's like I didn't even mean that. It was that was. Crazy. I thought that that I thought the disc record was whack, not musically whack. I just thought his bars was whack because I could listen to it. I told you that when I heard he it. Didn't try. It didn't try. No, he didn't believe any of that shit he was talking about. Whenever you shitting on somebody like Kendrick Lamar for their musical catalog, you need to shut the fuck up. Because the musical catalog is what Kendrick Lamar is known for. Kendrick Lamar ain't known for the antics. Kendrick Lamar ain't known for the goofy shit. Kendrick Lamar ain't getting on Twitter, Twitter spaces, crashing out on people. He's not doing that. Kendrick Lamar is straight up rapping. He's giving you music. That's what he gives you. He's got one of the most stellar catalogs ever in the history of hip hop. So when you try to clown, you know, Kendrick's catalog, I'm like, J. Cole, knock it off. You one of Kendrick's biggest fans, and we know this. All right, all okay? right. We're just saying it was crazy. It was unexpected. He said it was crazy. You know what? That is one of the craziest things that I saw this year. I'm not going to lie. I'm with you, Nyla. <laughs> J. Cole. Oh, so, like, that was crazy. Oh, I'm with you. Um, ooh. Eggy Doggy 68 says, is going crazy online marketable? <laughs> he said it's going crazy online marketable needs some money desperately uh i'm gonna tell you something eggy dog 88 uh going crazy online is not going to generate no money for you and i think that's what a lot of people a lot of y'all don't realize hey, they said i had two old girls getting bookings that's not going crazy when i say what you mean when i when i'm oh i'm thinking him like crashing out online like going on crazy like setting himself on fire oh i thought he meant just like you mean like going viral crazy? Oh, I guess I don't know. He said it's going crazy online, marketable, needs some money desperately. I just thought he meant like, oh, shit, we ain't, re- we ain't read the last part. And, and, and he meant to put unstable. That's why I didn't understand it. He put an unstable guy from Hungary. He meant to put unstable. So he means he's about to go crazy online. And he wants to know is that marketable because he needs some money desperately. So he thinks if he has a nervous breakdown online, then you know you that might lead to some money. Fund me. Yeah, are you better off doing some hawk tour? Oh my god! You need some money, go suck some dick. Oh god! Desperate times call for desperate measures. At least with the GoFundMe, you don't gotta lose dignity. Like you don't gotta go suck some dick. Are you can do an OnlyFans sucking some dick. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm yep. saying? <laughs> Ain't the only fan when people getting their dick sucked? I don't watch OnlyFans, so why are you looking at me? <laughs> Yo, set the bar, Eggy. Do- what is it? Edgy Doggy? Eggy Doggy. Eggy Doggy 68. Eggy. Hey, add a one to that shit and give us some 69. All right, let me see you on there giving motherfuckers some top. Yo, please. Give <laughs> motherfuckers some top. Please go to that. Or OnlyFans, and you might make some money. Hold it together, my brother. You know one. what I'm saying? Whatever you're doing, <laughs> whatever you're doing online, um, I mean, whatever you, whatever you got going on in your life, I hope you get through it, my brother. And I want to be the first to tell you that uh, don't make any permanent decisions off temporary feelings. I promise you trouble don't last always. I, 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 I have been broke, you know, several times on my come up, you know, back in the day, you know. Not no time in the last 15 years, but I'm 46. So that first 30... That first 30, 31 was no joke, all right? So I don't know how old you are, man, but, you know, just stay focused, okay? You'll be okay. Um, Am I looking forward to Deadpool 3? You motherfucking right, (laughs) okay? You goddamn right I'm looking forward to Deadpool 3. Deadpool 3, uh, to me, is what I hope um, resets the MCU. They might be too far gone, though, at this point. Um, I feel like... The MCU should have just skipped whatever they just showed us over the last four years, and they should have went from Endgame right into the mutant saga. I said that on this podcast before. I think that Marvel, Kevin Feige, everybody should just hit reset after after Endgame. They should have hit reset, and they should have went to a whole other Earth. Not they, we off Earth one Earth six one six. We saw the events that happened on Earth six one six. We know that the events on Earth six one six affected affected all of these Earths throughout the universe and all these multiverses. So take us to another uh, Earth and another universe 
And this universe is a universe where the X-Men exist. Maybe the Fantastic Four exists, but the Avengers don't. And you just build up the mutant saga the way you did, you know, um, the Avengers. And you could have probably started it off with Deadpool. You probably could have used, you know, Deadpool the way y'all use Tony Starks. I don't know. Use Deadpool and Logan the way y'all use Tony Starks to introduce all the rest of the X-Men. And then from that, you start talking to us about incursions and we already uh, we already know we're in a multiverse because we know we're on another another Earth. And eventually one of those incursions caused the two Earths to collide. And that's how you bring everybody together. That's what I would have done. But I'm not in those rooms. So what the fuck do I know? Let's do one more scroll up, Taylor. Scroll up, Taylor. Give me one more. Give me one more. Ooh, Mike Mason the third. Nyla, how do you create boundaries with your family and friends without getting them upset? They gonna get upset, but do it for yourself. Sound advice. That, that, that's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't about them. Like your ba your boundaries are not about your family and friends. If they get upset about your boundaries, that's all the more reason why you needed to put up a boundary in the motherfucking first place. Word. Okay. Okay. All right, y'all. We did it. We see y'all next week. Andrew Schultz will be back. Nyla, give me your Instagrams and Twitters and all of that shit like that. Follow me Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Nyla Simone, N-Y-L-A-S-Y-M-O-N-E-E-E. -E -E. Make sure you guys follow. It's a certified vibe. We update it weekly. We got the Breakfast Club where we pronounce the or announce the new records. But then also we got a playlist. We got monthly events. We have a lot of opportunities for upcoming artists. So definitely tap it. Oh, and lastly, I'm putting together this R&B tape. Um, for a label that I'm working with. Oh shit! So, now I got a record deal. Oh shit! Wow! Oh oh oh! Now so, I was working on an album. Oh shit! Wow! So oh, definitely oh, upcoming artists tap oh. in with me. Like Adonis, the I shouted him out on Breakfast Club. He's a brilliant edit listener. So when we posted the video, he hit me like, "Oh my god, this is crazy." Anyway, long story short, if you're an artist, definitely tap in with me. Um, Ain't no long story, motherfucker. Short. Now it's Simone putting pressure on y'all fuck niggas all for the rest of the year, okay? Y'all don't even know. Now they done turned down record deals, okay? All right? That's a motherfucking fact with big, big executives, okay? Stop playing with Big Nyla, all right? Next year, y'all gonna see something. I bet y'all won't leave her off no list next year. I don't want to be on the list. We don't care about shit. Like we really don't. We really, we, we, I, I, I'm thankful for any list that people put me on. I'm thankful if y'all put Nyla on the list. I just be, uh, I just, when I see blare, when I see glaring omissions, like I think Nyla. Like head? Like, oh. like head, like DJ Hawk Tour. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not even joking. And, and, and the reason head is the biggest omission to me is because of your criteria complex. So I need all of y'all to get back in the room and sit down and, and look at each other and say, why didn't we put Head on the list? Or why didn't we cover the Kendrick and Drake beef? Or why didn't, why aren't they? I mean, I will say they did send Jill out to Compton to cover the, the live show. Jill. But even prior to that, it was so much going on from J. Cole being a part of the beef to J. Cole falling out of the beef to, you know, them dropping records. I feel a like they did cover that. I'm sure there's articles they that did. they did. I'm sure they did. Nobody, there was no personalities over there covering it. Oh, no person. Okay, I get what you're saying. Um, as always, if you listen and then, to Oh shit, kid, thing, go, go now. Go. Thing is, like it used to be like you trust these websites and these news sources as credible sources, but now I got to just go to Rob Markman's Twitter cuz I know I could trust Rob. I don't necessarily what, what are you But to Complex's point, that's what they said about academics. They said that, you know, act as a personality because people don't necessarily trust, like, the big corporate media institutions anymore. Complex is a big corporate media institution. I ain't going to necessarily say I trust academics either. That's why I went with Rob. Just because, like, at least Rob tries to biasly give us the Be truth. Be objective. No, you mean yeah, objective. objective. Yeah. Like, he'll give us just what it is, and then he'll sprinkle his opinion at the end. We all know this nigga is on payroll, with every You're not on payroll. Oh, please, nigga. Academics that are not whole, on payroll. That fucking... Okay. I think academics has his picks. I think he's He got people he like, but we all do. There's people... There's people I'm going to crash out behind. This is true. I'm going to crash out behind you. I'm going to crash out behind head. There's people I'm going to crash out behind. You know, act fucks with Drake. So I'm not I'm mad saying. at that. It's like going to CNN and Fox. Like, uh, he's Fox. He still gives Kendrick props where props is due. That nigga's Fox. You just did him like Complex did him. It's the truth. Jesus I didn't Christ. disagree with the statement. I don't. Uh, 
Well, I like Fox. I'm a guy. That, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I like, and a lot of people like I watch, Fox. I do. I watch Fox I, News. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I. I can appreciate what Fox News does. Right. I understand what it is Fox News does. I understand what what Act does, and I think that Act. Um, shit, I trust Act more than a lot of people on that list. I'll tell you that. But that's what. That's a bad. That's not a good sign. I, I think. I think y'all give Act a bad rap. I really do. I, I've always felt like oh, well, that. Well, I'm not disagreeing with him being in the number one spot. I definitely think it would be, be between him and Joe. I know for me, during the battle, I was waiting for Joe's shit just because I know it's not biased. I know he's not on OVO payola. I think everybody was waiting for Ak during the Drake Kendrick beef because Ak had the records. I remember seeing... No, I think he had the records, but I'm just saying like... And these guys were hitting him personally. When we was at Andrew... And head. When we was and head, they was when, hitting head. When we was at Andrew Schultz's show at Madison Square Garden, <laughs> sold out motherfucking show. Remember, he sold out two nights at Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. Act was there. I didn't get a chance to see Act. And then when we all got backstage, I asked him. I said, "Yo, where Act at?" I saw him when he walked in, but I, I was sitting sitting somewhere else. And so I said, "Yo, where Act at?" Somebody said to me, "Yo, Act ran out because Drake about to drop again." I said, "What you mean, Drake about to drop again?" He said, "Yeah, Drake hit him." Drake sent him a, a, a DM or a text or something and was like, get home, I'm about to drop. The fact that Act left a night out to go back home shows, number one, his dedication to his chat. Which is why he deserves number Absolutely. one. Absolutely. That's dedication. That's work ethic. I respect it. And you got to be, when you, when you do things like that to get those kind of moments, that's how you end up at number one. You know what I'm saying? I respect it. I ain't mad at it. And if, like I said, Drake hit him to go do that, and he went and did it. He owned the moment. That's why he's number one. I ain't got no problem with it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like all the great icons, like the Sways, the Big Boys, the Angies, you got to create something else for them because they are just legendary legacy figures, and they're the reason we're all here. We stand on all of their shoulders. There's a few people I would take off to and add to the legendary list. Okay. I get it. They all in the Radio Hall of Fame. I'm in the Radio Hall of Fame, too. Okay. As always. You yes, Taylor. Think... Anything else, Taylor? No, I'm ready for y'all to go. Okay. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>